Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Rundown. I'm your host, Chris Fagan. Today we're going to talk about, it was Throwback Thursday, so we're going to talk about Showgirls as somebody's favorite movie on the panel tonight. Uh, Drew Barrymore has a little bit of trouble. We're going to get into that. And Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, his wife Mila Kunis, uh, there's another hot seat situation. Let's talk about all, <laughs> all that and more on The Rundown. Like I said, I'm your host, Chris Fagan, and thank you guys for joining us for another episode of The Rundown. Don't forget to send all your questions, your comments, your concerns. You can call our hotline at 281-406-1993. You can become a member, send Super Chats to let us know what you guys are thinking at all time. I'm sorry that we've been gone for a while, but we are back. And joining us today on a Thursday via satellite, hey, it's Tabs. What's up? And I got I, I just realized that I, uh, I I went to your screen too soon. See, I was supposed to go full screen right there. There you go. There you go. Taps. There you go. And that's me. And also joining us is Mrs. Christopher Fagan. I'm still on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Like I said, we're going to talk about uh, a, lo- a few things here tonight. Let me get this screen. Oh, wow. That thing is stuck on you. Let's get that, <laughs> Let's get that out the way. What's going on? Oh, oh, that's the technical difficulties. There we go. I realized what I was doing wrong. Guys, I'm sorry. It's It's been a whole thing, you know, uh, the past two weeks when we were down sick. We got the, the curse. We got we got hit with the plague. And uh, we had a little, yeah, a little bit of roan. Uh, that's why uh, Tabitha was like, I don't I don't feel safe. I'm not coming over. She's like, no. I'm just... I know. That is not how that happens. <laughs> She's like, not no. How that She's like, no, Chris, you, you're, you're, you still look contagious. I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> I actually got strep, so I was contagious. Oh yeah, yeah. You said you were, you were feeling um, a little down uh, as well. How, how about yeah, now? How, I had, how I are things now? For a week full, and I'm still recovering. It's stupid. I'm just so done with being sick, and I had every. It feels like I had everything but the vids. So. Oh, yeah. Stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm stalling. I'm trying to fix your uh, something behind the scenes. I'm always, I'm always tinkering stuff at the last minute. There, I think like I, leaving me blank there. Yeah, man. Hold like, like I got nothing else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Camera. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, I think I fixed it. No, no, I didn't. Where's your full screen? There you go, full screen. I found it. And oh, it's gonna be switched. There we go. I just have to make sure that button worked. Jeez, well, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still suffering from the, uh, the effects, you know. So it's, it's, it's been a, it's been a couple of issues with me. It's always an issue here. All right, let me, let's, let's just stop stalling because I know everybody wants to get back to what they uh, want to do. I'm gonna monitor the chats. I know it's been a minute, so I, I didn't expect too much. I didn't advertise this episode the way I used to. Still trying to get back into the swing of things, guys. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, let's just get into the topics, babe. What is the first topic of the day, the week? Up, up first, body cam records officer saying a woman run over by Seattle police had limited value. Yeah, we have a. Uh, there's a clip oh, on that one. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah, we have a clip of that here. Check this. Uh, let's check this out. See if we play this. For a train driver. Yeah, lights and sirens. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's some. The, initially, uh, he said she was in a crosswalk. Uh, there's a witness that said, no, she wasn't. But that witness could be different because I don't think she was thrown 40 feet either. Uh, I think she went up on the hood, hit the windshield. Then when he hit the brakes, flew off the car. Hmm. But she is dead. (laughs) No, it's a regular person. Yeah. Yeah, just write a check. Just... $11,000. Yeah, <laughs> $11,000. She was 26 anyway. She had limited value. Yeah, that was that was the line right there. Limited value. 
uh, well, Taz, let me start with you. What did you, what did you think about this uh, situation? This was that headline came from uh, NBC News. Let me see if my thing is working. There. From NBC I don't News. Understand. I don't understand how someone who is supposed to be in service of hum other human beings thinks so little of human beings. Like, the laughing and the desensitized aspects of some, the, even the way he said, yeah, she's dead. And then just, I don't, I don't understand. I do not understand how someone can be this crass. What it, you, it's sickening, honestly. But what do you think about it when, when that story first popped up that, uh, there are so many things wrong, wrong. <laughs> For, you know obviously number one the, the insensitivity mm -hmm. I mean, like that you're just so crass but two and three behind that who who's putting this out there the do well who, so that that wasn't this who's throwing these videos out there and and these days you know big brother is everywhere oh that was that was his major problem right there he thought <clears throat> he didn't know that the camera was on at the very end of that video he he realizes that his camera is on he thought he turned it off to have that conversation and uh I don't think cops quit. should be allowed to turn off their cameras, by the way. Where is this concept that they can turn on and off their cameras? The whole point is to hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. they, they must be running the entire shit, in my mind. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I'm trying to get you back on screen here. Uh, but no, yeah, you're right. I. It wasn't. Now, that wasn't the officer that, that struck her. I, that, that was, uh, see, it was, was it Danielle? It was Danielle Otter? The Otter? Can be heard. That was uh, that was another officer named Daniel, Officer Daniel Otter, Otterer, if I'm saying it right. He said, can be heard in the clip laughing about the death of uh, Janavi Kandula, if I'm saying that correctly, on January uh, back in January the 23rd, uh, and discussing details of the car crash. It, it was a, a a cop that was in pursuit of another of a suspect or something was driving. I think she. I think he had, yeah. She was up on the curb or something like that, or well, crossing the street he, or something. Obviously, there was conflicting stories. Yeah, and, and one person said she was in the crosswalk, but another witness said no, she was on the curb. So yeah, I, I, you don't really get to hear any. And uh, it was a uh, officer. Was the Seattle officer? I thought I had his name. I thought I. I thought I had his name. Daniel but. Otter. That's that. That's the person that was, could be heard in the clip. That was the. That's the guy in the clip. That's the, that's not the person that that ran her over. Oh yeah. But so and after the incident that happened, yeah, this other officer who was, um, I guess, investigating the the hit, was recorded, uh, accidentally recorded himself, making that uh, that phone and call. And the guy who who talks about just like write the check. Supposedly he, the city has paid so much money out for his previous issues with regards to police brutality. Well, that's, so, yeah, yeah that's, just, that's probably why he made the joke. You're just right in there. Yeah, yeah, we, we, get, we get away with it. Just, work, just cut a check. Yeah. yeah. He, he doesn't care. Yeah. And the fact that he still has a job is just, well, after this, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think he'll have a job after. I don't, I don't think he, both of those officers uh, will have well, a he, job. I mean, he still did. Well, when was this happened in January? Yeah. 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 And he had a job up until this very moment. They, they, they always on paid leave until they can. If, they're, they're always on paid leave uh, for a while until they realize they can't cover for him anymore. Then they're fine. Uh, there, there have been some situations lately where the chief of police is, acts quick. They release the footage in record time and uh, the, the firing is almost the, the same week. I was like, I was impressed. I thought that was what was going to be happening moving forward. But no, we still have cases like this where it moves slowly. They're trying to find the way to make up a benefit of the doubt <laughs> for, for, <laughs> for these guys. And, but there's, there's no, there's no way around this. You laughed at the death of a, of a innocent pedestrian and valued her, her death, her whole life. Yeah, I give her 11 grand. Like it's not like it. Like, like it's nothing. She was like, in the, he, he literally like he, he said her age at one point in the video and was like, just like she doesn't contribute not nothing to life. Yeah, yeah. He said she's only 26. That's limited value. Yeah. Right? Limit something like yeah, limited value I, bullshit. Yeah. But what the hell, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting it. Like, I, I don't get it. 
get it. Okay, yeah, it's it's getting crazy out there, guys. Let us know what what anything that you guys want to share about this on the topic. A comment below in the comment section. I don't know if you got if you're watching live. Let, I'm watching the chats, but if you're in the comment section after the after this, if you're watching this on TikTok or wherever you're watching this on, comment below. Let us know your thoughts on it, and maybe we'll talk about it again uh, when there's some updates uh, on it. All right, let's move on. What's the next topic, babe? The Drew Barrymore show. Audience members say they were kicked out for Writers Guild support amid mm. picket. This headline is from The Hollywood Reporter. The talk show resumed taping without its three WGA writers Monday as picketers demonstrated outside of CBS studios. I think I had a, a I didn't have one originally, but I think I came up, I, I came up with a clip real quick on it. Let me see if I can find it. Let me see if this is it. Dominic Turchuk and Cassidy Carter, two New York City-based students who had signed up for free tickets to the taping, were handed WGA pins by picketers as they walked in the door and say they were asked to leave before the show began because they were wearing the pin. Drew Barrymore show wrote in a statement to THR, it is our policy to welcome everyone to our show tapings. Due to heightened security concerns today, we regret that two audience members were not permitted to attend. The two later joined the picket lines outside, donning the WGA shirts. As Turchuk said, if they think we're part of the strike, we might as well be. Carter added that she had signed up for tickets as a fan of Barrymore, but now has been disheartened by the experience. So, the, I don't know, the, to me, the excuse, uh, I mean, I understand them thinking because they were wearing the, the, the buttons that they might be picketers who were going to try to disrupt the show. Yeah. I get that mentality. Uh, their, their excuse was we didn't, need, we didn't know about any uh, picketing. We only saw it when we were, were going to the Drew Barrymore show. And I'm going to be honest. That part of their story, I don't buy. Everybody knows that there's a writer strike going on, and and uh, it happened before the the actor strike. But so whether well, they the whether that, uh, you can read, and yeah, the pen says what it is. Well, yeah, well they 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 said that they took it because they when they when they walked through the picket line to go to the show, they were handing out uh, pins like please you know don't go in there, please support the right. Like I will take a pin and we'll wear it because we do support this, but we're still gonna go into the show. And then because they had the button on, the, the producers assumed that they were strikers that were going to make a scene. And then they, then they come out and go, you know, we weren't going to make a scene. We were just going to go to the show and they kicked us out because of assumptions. So it's not, which if, that, if it's 100% true, it, it, they're, they're right. Drew Barrymore were fucked up. That's, that's messed up. But even if they were going in to cause a scene because they're picketers, right? I mean, Drew Barrett, the whole, the, the whole concept of Drew Barrymore's show actually running right now when she is an entertainment show, even though she's trying to pass as a news broadcast station situation, is just ridiculous. And so the, 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 the main problem is Drew Barrymore's Drew Barrymore show shouldn't even be running. Well, that, that's, what, that's what they're saying, but I, I disagree because as she, she's following the guidelines. She's not. She doesn't she, have act. She doesn't. Writers. It's just. It, it's like when the when the writer strike. It's like when the writer strike first began. She was to host something. I think I forgot. It was an award show, and because of that, she said she wasn't. She wasn't going to do it. So she has been in solidarity with the actor strike and the writer strike. But no, this she's not, is. She has. She has writers. She has but writers she's that not using the. She's writers. and she's not. Yeah, they're and not, she's not. Not working. She's not using her writers. And yeah. and she's not ta and just and like the, the Screen Actors Guild has said she's fine to work as long as she's not using her writers. Right. She's following the, the she's following the and rules. As long as uh, anybody that comes on the show doesn't talk about a current movie or project right. that they're working which, on, they which, which are the uh, which which are the rules? Like just like <laughs> when actors now are going to conventions, they didn't know whether or not they could talk about things. It's like no, you can go to the conventions. Do not talk about struck work or the, from struck producers. Which is the same scenario. I, like it's just like the. I guess the, I'm not. I'm not understanding then the moral. I'm not understanding the moral. Okay, here because if you're in support of this, and the whole point is to create a strike to create hardship so that networks don't have things, so that it affects them, so that they make change, mm -hmm. then how can you morally be okay with running your show with just out, out those writers? Because and, all she feels that all of her other her 
camera crew, her makeup artist, those people aren't getting to work and they're not a part of the screen actors because they're not an actor. They're not part of the writers because they're not writers. Those people aren't getting to work. So she, right. it's like, you know, I am in support of what the writers are doing, but I have a but lot as of a, crew but as a producer, they need to work. And right. I'm... I, I understand that, but that's the point of a strike. A strike is supposed to create hardships for the people within that moment so that the big wigs will finally stop the shit and create a, a better scenario for all. To, right. To strike to work, it has I, to have a negative effect on mm-hmm. the, the, the the big picture. Which is exactly, which is why she's not using writers. She's uh, she, she, but that but here, here, here's but it, the purpose of the strike. It, but here's the well, okay. Well, here's another way to look at it. When, and this is some, I, this is something that was brought up in the in the argument about it, which I. I to me, I mean, I, I know it's not going to satisfy the the writers who are upset about it, but it, to to me, this is the the trump card on it. When the writer, because the writer strike started months before the actor strike started, right? Remember that it was like earlier this year, right? Mm-hmm. And when the writers went on strike, the actors didn't go on strike immediately. They didn't stop. They 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 didn't uh, go into the we need to do this for the hardship for uh, do this hardship for against the producers. Uh, to to show solidarity with the the writers, they just said we're in solidarity with the writers, and they continue to work and make money. But when they decided to a couple of months later to go on strike, uh, it was it was for their separate uh, you know issues that were for the payments that they're not getting paid for what you know for all the issues that the the actors uh, guild wanted to go on strike for. But when the writers first went on strike, the actors didn't go didn't strike immediately. It was like four or five months later. So I understand what you're saying, but I think that just because the timeline was delayed doesn't mean that it wasn't happening. It was just trying to happen within the unions and create the right momentum in that point. But now that the momentum is there, the strike needs to happen appropriately. And for an actor, Drew Barrymore, who is also a producer, so she's got both sides to the story. Right. And for her under for her to to sit there and ignore the fact that she's 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 negatively contributing to what her writers need and what other actors need. So what? So what do? What, so what do the makeup artist, camera crew, janitor, the every everybody else, the stagehands, the key grips? I mean, there's a there are legit people losing their homes. Yeah. I mean, what, there are there are actors they're, who they're, are talking about. I've I, we are losing our home, and these are actors. Just because they're like, you think some of us make big money, and we don't make big money, right? Um, and like the actors, the, the actors need to be paid fairly. The writers deserve, deserve to be paid fairly, but their their strike. It, it, this is it's not it's not like the key. It's not like the costume designers uh, uh, guild went on strike too. They're they're not. A, they're, people they might crossfire that aren't getting anything out of it, and are also losing. Yeah, big time, and they're like. We didn't do anything, <laughs> right? Why? Yeah. Why? Why does the why does a custodian worker have to uh, lose his house because the because uh, a union that he's not a part of he he might have his own he or she might have his own union and might have their own thing but they might they were like our deal is great they made a great deal with us but the actors are now on strike and so now that affects uh that affects my job you can still be in solid and and on top of that. Like the actors, like again, the ones that go to conventions, there are actors still uh, making, still go, making money, and still doing things a- around in other ways. I look at that as like as uh, this is that, this is this is Drew Barrymore, who I is an actor. An but issue. so what? I wouldn't have an issue if her show, for example, her sh- her show is geared around actors and movies and stuff. You're you're right you're right about that. But so, but but in this, she's not going to do that. She's not going to have actors on talking about struck work. I understand, but all, altering it to me is a shit move. Her her whole basis of her show is to support actors, writers. That's what her show is based off of. And because there's a strike, she's altering it and then not standing with the strike. Where her, she's her, 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 show her show is a talk. Her show is a talk show. Her but her show is a talk show. It she with only writers. she only had three. Uh, WGA uh, writers on staff 
and you don't need just it's just like this show right here is a, is a, is a talk show. If I had a writer, a, a, a WGA writer working for the rundown to help me write jokes or an intro and things like that, but they couldn't work uh, uh, here any, uh, anymore. And then that doesn't mean that this talk show has to because we don't have to talk about though. We could talk politics. We could talk. Uh, we yeah. could talk about any uh, anything else because there might be there might be other employees who I also need uh, need to work. But the, the hardship to of do. to these studios is still that's still happening because that uh, the show the show is not going to be as funny as it is because those writers aren't helping Drew write those jokes. And it, it's going to be it's still going to be hit. And actors aren't still uh, getting any uh, work. So their strike is still affecting the studio. But I disagree. I don't think the strike if if because Drew because of how Drew Barrymore's show is set up and what her show is and mm -hmm. who she is mm -hmm. and the position she has, I think that it was a mistake for her to continue the show. I think she should have to for for it to affect the studio for it to affect the big wigs. You have to take down the things that are making them money, and the studio's still making money. But because and she's running her goddamn show. Well, uh, and all the and all the employees that aren't in those uh, those uh, guilds are all going to lose their homes. Like I said, the I key grips, stagehands, so makeup artists, other, dress designers, like, set designers. Here lately, there are so many um, other companies who are strike are making their own deals to continue to get to continue filming their shows yeah and nobody cares no one's mad at them someone's picketing them and the, the last time stri a strike the last time a strike happened they that was the rise of reality tv that same thing is going to happen again we're, we're just going to get a, 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 a going no, what? the whole point is to take it away from the big wigs if you're not if you're doing other funding or you're do, going other routes where it's not going to those big wigs absolutely utilize that do that take it away from them have more independence but the point is, is to take the money away from the big wigs so that they pass that damn money down so people are getting paid appropriately. But do you do you think like so do you think the the view should have should stop uh, showing their their show? They're, they've they've never stopped. I will be honest. I don't just 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 be, just, be, well, just, and, just as an example, not, not saying that you watch it or not. Just just I just the, don't know what they're about. They they they've talk they talk with actors they, they talk with they have they talk entertainment news and hot a, topics and stuff too. Variety of things. They they talk politics and stuff like that too. But they and they also had WGA writers that worked with them. And then when the strike started, the first thing that they did they didn't stop showing. They they announced because we don't have our writers anymore. There's certain you know we don't have scripts. We're not allowed to have, uh, write scripts. So we're we're just we we know what we're going to talk about. And we're just going off of those topics, but we don't have scripts uh, anymore uh, for uh, like we like we used to. And they didn't they didn't skip a beat. They just kept going. They would talk politics. They talk I hot see. topics and things like that. But Whoopi Goldberg is a whole Oscar winner. She's also yeah, an actor. Gonna, I don't think it should. I, I would stand by them. The view shouldn't be on. It, but but just but, but no but that's but my point is just because Whoopi Goldberg is an Oscar winner doesn't mean that her show is geared around. Back in 2008 when the last time they had a, a, a writer's strike. Mm -hmm. back in, And at that time, all the talk shows stayed on. They didn't use their writers. Right. They, they worked without them, and nobody cared because everybody just kind of was like, well, it's, it's all talk. I mean, they're not TV shows. They're not movies. They're right. talk shows. I'm not sure why suddenly this time... It's a big deal when they're, when it's, they're uh, I'm, I'll be, I'm gonna be honest to I me. Mean, it's, we're it's, talking it's, about like the back. I mean, that was an 08. There was some different different hosts, but we're talking about like the Jimmy Kimmel's, the, the late night. You know, back then I think it was Letterman and. Well, yeah, they they, they have they have writers there. they have writers who would write their jokes and stuff like. But they don't if for yeah. a talk show you don't need you know they make right. the show better. Right, but they but, all stayed on in the last strike mm -hmm. and just didn't. Have writers. They didn't have writers. They would just and go into the topic. Cared yeah, because they were like, we're not using writers. Because you're, you're in solid. But but now every now it's but like this time suddenly it's a big. Everybody deal. wants to because now everybody wants to uh, to call somebody out for being for scabbing or being uh, for for being a scab. She's if she's following the rules. She the, the she spoke with the WGA and the and the and SAG, 
and and said, and if I br- if I bring my show back and do not break any of those stru- struck in rules, those, those those the guidelines, uh, I need I need to. She, her appeal was, I need to get my show back on because we have more than just the writers and the actors uh, union involved with this production. We have other people who are who uh, aren't who aren't uh, a part of a part of this strike who are being affected. Now, I understand uh, striking and making it hurt for the uh, for the big wigs. But if if there was a if there was a uh, a strike on on uh, I, I don't know, I can't come up with an example. There's a, there's a, there's an actors and a writers strike. And because of the emphasis that Hollywood is is geared to put on actors because they're the face and the writers because they're the whole damn you know, backbone. They're, they're, there's no show if there's no script. But if you're if you're if you went to college and you went to a, a film school to be a director, if you went to be a if you're if you're a, a costume designer, you no longer. Uh, I mean, I can, I, I can say you can make costumes for non-act. You can make sets for other things, but with with the. Well, I mean, can I ask P- you this? Peter's though? Peter's asking: Does did um, everything else shut down, like reality game shows? Talk. Um, no, um, that's that's all that's going to be on this season is uh, reality shows because they don't consider that, even though those are scripted, they don't consider that the same thing uh game shows are are, they're coming up with all kinds of new crazy game shows Mm -hmm. to fill empty slots um because those again they don't consider those counting right (laughs) but uh oh go ahead go ahead question though so then would you consider it okay for them to use ai to write these things since they're not using writers. I mean, they're, they're, they're artificial uh, intelligence. That's that's what the writers' guild is uh, is one of the things that, that they're striking about. I mean, that's that, to me that's comparing that's com- to me that's comparing ac- uh, uh, apples to spaceships because we're talking we're talking about we're ta- we're talking about um, we're, we're no we're talking about but we're talking but she's not using script she's not using writers uh, in this she's no, not breaking she's, she's not breaking their their write. rules. So, but what if she's using? So they're they're claiming that they're coming it out of okay a writer literally comes up with this shit out of their head so they're rifting off their head instead of writing it down on a piece of paper no no people for talk no for talk for no for like podcasts and talk shows you're allowed to if you're if you're not a, you're not a you're not me you and Joy we're not WGA uh, members and we still I still write a uh, a show note and a script uh, and, yeah. I, and and things like that. I would technically, if let's say let's say the rundown was one of the most popular podcasts in the world, and I and I had a WGAA writers. If 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 John Smith, my writer, who is a member, can't work for uh, with us anymore, I'm still as a non-member. I'm still able to write our show notes. That's what that's what the View is doing. That's what these news uh, shows are doing. That's what the uh, that's what now Drew Barrymore is doing. But I can't. But she doesn't. Her three writers that she had. She had them doing her funny intro and these topic or these sketch sketches that she would do. She can't do that anymore. She's like, okay, as long as we don't do that, can I can I reopen back up because I have I have more people than just act uh, uh, those three writers and the actors that come on the show. Sometimes we we do other we talk about other things. We can talk about other things and we and we uh, we have other uh, people. I, I have like I said, make for makeup artists. They they're not working any anymore. Because they I mean, got, they have no actors that really uh, basically it's a podcast, but with cameras like because it's so on. That's my thing. Run it on a different platform. If the whole point is to make a difference, and you're just wanting to be up and running, and you still want to support, run it on a different platform. Run it but on it does, TikTok. Run it on run it on Instagram. Run it on a different platform other than the big wigs. I mean, I, I get what you're saying because it still it still trickles down to because they're gonna there's gonna be sponsors. It's still gonna trickle up to the yeah. the producers, but it still also puts work in, like I said, the like I said, makeup artists, and, and that's the best example I can give. The cameraman, they don't they don't no, get to they do don't that. get to work there's anymore. Sound people work them, use them, 
But how? But but how? They if they, if, if you're they, not going to get that kind of money off of a podcast, you, you're, you're not, yeah. going to get from CBS paying yeah. their staff. If they're working, if they're mostly working paycheck to paycheck, which most of these guys are saying that they that, that's their situation, and then uh, then Drew Barrymore goes, we're going to switch it to a podcast. How does that help Rick, the cameraman? Uh, like, the, uh, I don't know. Uh, Dragon movie guy says, I mean, he's like the, the line between entertainment and news is sketchy because the 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 news programs like your your night NBC nightly news, all of those shows, mm-hmm. those are someone writes everything those people say and they they still get to be on yeah. because we're we're calling it news and that's okay yeah he also says they're, you bear more isn't the, the only show restarting without writers all the late night shows yeah, are they're, start, all, they're, they're all starting up again and all the uh I, I yeah I, I didn't even know i know that they stopped and i understood i understood more why the the, the late shows stopped because yeah. The, the, they definitely have writers. It's they definitely, they, they definitely, yeah, they, do uh, a lot of skits they do a lot of sketches lot of, and stuff. Uh, yeah. And whatnot. A lot more stuff than just sitting in the chair and talking. But if, but if Drew um, Barrymore's show isn't, if, if it's adaptable to work, to go to the. Drew and The View don't really do a lot of skit stuff. It's, yeah. it, it's really just. I think that's what she's, I think that's where she's trying, because I give The View, for example, a pass because they talk politics. They talk about the news, the current events. They don't have to talk to actors. And when they still, to this day, still do have actors on their show, they, the, act, the, the actors know and the, view, the people know not to ask them any questions about you know, the stuff that'll get them, you know, caught, get them struck. You know, like, don't, don't ask me about that movie I just did because that's Warner Brothers. Don't, I'm not going to talk about it. And they know that. And they and that and they're still following the rules, but well, because I mean, they still because talk about politics and stuff, it's it's more it's a news, uh, hot topics type of like the rundown. That's like oh, we talk about in the well, the latest entertainment uh, news. People are very good at. I haven't watched a lot of Drew's show. I've seen clips before on TikTok, and she's. The clips that I saw was the funny stuff that you knew was being written. Well, no, but I what mean, tap like what Tab was talking about. That's geared, the, well, yeah. no, I've seen her just. Talking to and I, yeah, and she's actors. talked about it's more along the lines of like an of an Ellen where they're not talking about a movie, um, like for example when Ellen talked to was it Kristen Bell mm-hmm. because she's like such a lover yeah. of they, they, uh, yeah they would just shoot the shit of sloth, of sloth. she has this like yeah. crazy obsession so she was like. I heard a story. Tell me about. Tell me about right. your birthday. That, yeah, your it was, it's a talk. It's a talk show. And so she goes into this long story about how her husband hired someone to bring over a, a sloth for her to pet, and they had video footage of her f- losing her mind. Right. So I mean, they're not even talking about TVs Which, or uh, movies or anything. It's just and that, and that's funny the point stories. that she was, that's, and that's the point that Joy is making, uh, Tabs, because that's as like like the reason why actors can still go to conventions as long as they're shooting the shit and talking about anything else other than the struck stuff they're still allowed to make money and go to those to those conventions because they're not promoting the uh the big studios so that's what so if like uh what what's the the, the place that we went to the uh, the convention uh comic okay. Palo- yeah, com- comic-con or comic palooza here in, in houston that we we go to there weren't they weren't allowed to talk about or wouldn't have been allowed to talk about struck stuff Drew Paramore is now setting her show up in, as, in the same way. I know, I, but I understand what Tablet's talking about. But the money is still fi- is going to find a lot of the money is still going to funnel its way up to the people uh, to Warner, well, whoever the studio is, Disney or Warner Brothers or, or whatever, and they need to they need to fill the uh, the punch. I I agree, but I also agree that the people who aren't on strike who are affected by I'm just a I'm just a key grip. I just I'm, I just put the stage you together. My the life middle. is all it's the stuff that comes. I've told I told you it's the same kind of stuff that happens when I mean we don't have unions here in Texas, but like with nurses in these other states that do, and they go on strike, and then you have scab nurses that have that work. Yeah. And you know you you get people that are angry with them, and I get I, I support nurses getting paid what they should be getting paid because most of us don't get paid what we deserve to be paid but you do also have to think who's caught in the crossfire if literally nobody showed up to work uh, what do you think happens to patients yeah scab nurses seem Somebody to get has to show up yeah scab nurses uh tabs oh get get forgiven a little bit more because this is about people's lives and those no, situations I mean, people throw 
things yeah. at them. They yeah. they get food throw to, thrown at them. They oh, get, shit. I mean, it, it's a big deal. People get very angry because you're a traitor. Well, you're working, and we're trying to fight to get paid fairly, and you're getting paid the big bucks to come in and, and work. So people get very upset about it. It's a big thing. We don't have them here in Texas, so it's not really a yeah. thing here. But... And I see both sides, but you do have to think there are people that are caught in the middle. Yeah. And that's your patience. Well, Tabitha ain't playing that <laughs> shit. Tab- Tabitha's <laughs> going to punch somebody in the dick <laughs> for, for crossing that picket line. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, I don't give a fuck. Like, but, 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 but real quick, going back to those people, what do you think? Oh, let's, let's, let's try to uh, figure it out. Let's, what do you speculate? Do you think they were really, um, those two people that got kicked out, do you think they were... Uh, strikers that were that might have made a, a situation, or do you think they were just I, victims of circumstances? I think that my personal opinion is, is that they were just people wanting to go to the show. They got an opportunity to go probably for free, and you know they were just wanting to take advantage of that opportunity and got a pin on their way in, and then you know unfortunately were perceived as strikers and. Got kicked out. I Get out of here, you rebel I, scum. Yeah, but that, but that's so. also just like, but, but but on top of this point, that's also again a bad look for for yeah. Drew Barrymore because what do you try, so just because uh, I'm a fan, I'm a regular, I'm not a writer, I'm not a member of that, uh, I'm just a guy wearing a pin. So what are you trying to say? You don't you so now you don't support the the strike now because you said you supported it, Drew. You 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 denied she work. Came back with like we didn't know and we couldn't like, risk I didn't it. Well, but she has that. already had very recently at a not a it wasn't a, like her live show. She went to like like a comic type and uh, comic palooza type event and has a stalker mm-hmm. that was in the crowd that has been following her around. So I mean. They're going to be watching for people who would be. They need to hire Tabitha to punch him in the dick. And they don't really have a way to know. I mean, anybody can go. I wasn't really. I'm not trying to do anything. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What they're just supposed to take your word for it. That's the part that got me. I'm like, uh, oh, I got something in the way of the. Okay. No, that's the part that got me. That part of their story where they might be telling the truth, but they're like, I didn't know about a strike. Who at this point like doesn't know about a strike right now standing outside and you're going well i'm not one of them yeah. and, and i'm just supposed to magically know that uh, yeah you look like everybody else that's walking outside I, how would i know i i condone I, I give drew a credit for trying to keep the other people who aren't involved but are who are heavily impacted and try to put, you know, make uh, give them the opportunity to, to earn within the rules of the guidelines of the strikes, both strikes. I give her credit for that as a producer. It is a bad look, though, because you because there are people like uh, that's on tab of the side who, who was like, no, we just this is crossing uh, uh, the line. I can understand how it, I don't necessarily agree that this because she's following the guidelines, but but I can see, I can understand anybody who who does look at this as a a brutal portray, uh, betrayal. Especially as a fellow actor, because she is an act, an actor, and, and and but at the same, she's wearing. But with these people that are wearing these multiple hats, I know they I know they feel now that they're um, they're caught they're caught no in the one middle. No one is saying that her position is easy. We all believe her position is difficult. Mm-hmm. It's the people who have the most difficult positions that can make the biggest impact. So that's why I'm kind of trying to hold her to a higher standard because of her position. And the impact that she can have. Did you did you know about the 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 what happened uh, earlier in the in the actor strike when the producers uh, over there uh, what's what's that a sap sap the, the the on the producer side I forgot their, their what their organization is called uh, a statement came out that that they were they were okay with with waiting out the storm because of all the money that the, all the things that they have on the pipelines and coming out th- there was a, a couple of producers made his, made statements saying that oh yeah well a, a bunch of a bunch of these uh, these actors who aren't mega rich like the rock and 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 tom hanks a bunch of them will will start losing their houses and they're mortgages they can't hear tab oh yeah they're gonna wait it out that shit's nasty you said they oh they said they can't hear tab yeah. oh Uh-oh. let's see if i forgot to I mean, they can hear her, but it's very, very low. Oh, so, but oh, they can only hear it through my. Oh, they're hearing it through my microphone. Maybe I forgot to. Um, 
Oh, they should. It's. They just said it's much lower compared to ours. That's that's all I'm, I'm getting that a couple of times now. You didn't hear, so you guys didn't hear Tab when she said she was going to punch people in the dick. <laughs> I'll try to get it, I'll try to get it fixed. I think I'll I turned the volume up, so maybe. Okay. Let's see if that'll if that fixes. It. Sorry, uh, sorry about that. We're we're zooming, but all right. I guess that, that's a good segue. We can move on to the next. How we kind of land on that one uh, for a while, but I'll I'll try to fix the audio on that. See if I if I can see what uh what why it's not connected. Um. All right. Let's move on to the next topic, babe. What's the next one? The backlash against Ashton Kutcher and Myla Kunis explained how will it impact their careers. The headline comes from Box.com. Character letters can be an important part of criminal sentencing. These Danny Masterson letters miss the point. Uh, Joy had you saw. Well, real quick, let's, let's the whole this whole situation. When I when I heard that they uh, apologized for writing their character letters uh, to the judge. And we know if you guys don't know that that's when family members of an accused or a sentenced person uh, they'll try to they'll write these impact letters to hopefully get their sentence reduced or to impact the judge's decision or, or, or maybe the jury's decision. And then you saw you also said that the that the people on the prosecution side, the family members of the victim, people related to the victims, well, can also write these yeah, letters on to, to say the opposite. Deserve. Like punch him in the dick, like what Tabitha would say. <laughs> the yes, but um, punch him in the dick. Punch him in the dick. <laughs> um, but the thing that made that made me go, oh, this is gonna this is gonna fuck your career up, is the fact that they they had to come up with an apology for writing. I, I like I'm like, why are you apologizing? You're apologizing because it was made public. They said it out loud. We we didn't we only thought it was for the judge to read. We didn't know that this was stuff that was gonna be. Um, uh, made public or read out loud or blah uh, blah blah blah. So we want to apologize to anybody that no. But 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 why are you apologizing now? You meant to they the family Masterson's family asked you to write a, write letters on his behalf. You you took that information and you did it. So you meant to do it. So I don't really understand the apology on on that side. So of it. here's here's my only interjection into that mm -hmm. and. The only because I I always try to find compassion for the other side and maybe yeah. their reasonings why. Unless you're but Drew Barrymore. If a mother, <laughs> uh, if a mother of a murderer was asked to write a letter about her son who murdered someone, her compassion for her son still going to be there, no matter if he's a murderer or not. She can go, he's a fucking killer, but this is what I think about my son. Right. Right. No, I, I, I said I said the same. Yeah, I said the same thing. I, I said it makes more sense for family members. I mean, they they it did explain that they were writing it from the point of view of the person that they knew mm -hmm. him to be. I think probably everyone's biggest problem is that to this day, Danny Masterson still says, I didn't do shit wrong. I didn't do anything. Which is the biggest problem. That's yeah. the biggest problem. There, biggest problem. At no point did he say, look, I really messed up. I didn't know. Whatever. I'm sorry. Whatever. Because then people would be like, okay. I'm not, I'm not saying they would forgive him, but you would be like, at least he admitted it and said, man, I messed up. That was a long time ago. I'm not yeah. the same person. But he's maintained this whole time. I didn't do anything. Well, but crossing the lines and stuff, like, like, this kind of also kind of goes into what we were talking about uh, uh, previously. I like I can I can see exactly what what Tabs is saying. Like for family members and stuff like that, that makes sense. But in but you this, guys, I'm going to push back on that word you're using because who gets to dictate what is family? Blood does not make family. Is, is if you if I, if if you would if you would if if you would have asked uh, if you if I would have been in the exact same situation, I don't need. He doesn't need to be my family member. To and, 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 to and all that. I've I've had family members uh, who were who were uh, accused of or of, of heinous crimes and whatnot. And if I believe that they were uh, guilty, if if I believe they were innocent of it, if I believe they were one hundred percent innocent of it, not, then yeah, I would I would write that impact statement. If there was doubt in my mind, I probably would not. That's just that's just me personally. I'm not saying that they were wrong for writing. They felt like they was right at the time. They they were asked to do it and they decided to do it. But there were there the you you said that there Joy I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm pointing to Joy Joy said you said that there was one actor 
who used to get uh, to was it Topher? It's, yeah, the guy who played Eric. The the lead of that show who used to get shit uh, uh, a lot from uh, the uh, uh, from his cast mem mates and stuff like that. He was the one. Pr he was also asked to do a a. Uh, he a said, statement. fuck you. And he said, no, he said, like he no. He made an Instagram post, him, him and his wife, uh -huh. that was basically like, we stand for all the women who've been raped. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's my point. I, even, even if Ashton when, and Mila were leaning on, we're just, we're, we're just writing this based on the person that we knew. There's, there's some common sense that has to be brought into this. There is a chance, and it's, since he was found guilty, a very high chance, that he's guilty of this thing. Just because, like, I, if I'm a if I'm a uh, a serial killer, but me and T but Tab, me and you were best friends, and I'm I'm like I like to kill people, but I'm never gonna kill Tab, and I've only and I only show you my nice Dexter side, and I never show you my dark passenger, and just because you use don't Dexter, yeah, use like, Dexter as use Dexter as an example, right? How many t how many times have we uh, taken something of a bad behavior and created an antihero and rooted for them? Be even though the behavior's bad. Oh no, no! I still turn Dexter's ass in. I don't give a damn how nice he is. He's a fucking killer. Like I don't care. He's, he only kills the bad. People. So he's still mur He's a murderer. Yeah, I can't try. I'm not gonna. Exactly. Like as Dragon Movie Guy has uh, is, has said in the comments, and, and that's that's probably what most people are having a problem with. Typically, when you have like a murderer and their family member is mm -hmm. writing a letter. Those, that person is again acknowledging. I know what my son daughter did was horrendous. Yeah. I'm at, I'm begging for mercy because this is my child. So they're acknowledging that this everything is wrong, mm -hmm. but they're telling you I still love my kid and I'm and I'm asking for mercy. And, yeah. They're saying Ashton and Myla. There is no acknowledgement that anything was done. They're just saying, "Look, I know him to be a cool dude. He's been cool for me." For, and, that, and that's time the I've first big him. mistake because Tabitha because Tabitha's right. Is a problem. No you, one's saying. No one out there is going like I know he did some messed up stuff. Yeah, that, that that that's their first mistake on that on their letters because Tabitha's right. Like they, just because they're not blood relatives, don't mean that they don't have a blood uh, uh, a family connection or a bond. They might be the best friends uh, in yeah. the world. So I don't. So I'm not faulting them for feeling that it was uh, the right thing to do to speak on his behalf and to give him a, a, to a lighter sentence. But if you didn't acknowledge, if you didn't acknowledge at all in your letter what he did, what he, what he what, it. even it's even true. if you didn't believe he did it, you it's. We're talking about Hollywood again. You're, dude, you're, you're in the Hollywood mix. You, you, you know how it looks that Hollywood people are all blah, blah, devil worshiping and Satanists and, and, and deviants and stuff, and all that stuff and it can impact you. You know how this is gonna look. So it's like to Topher knew how it was gonna look. That's why he said, "Fuck that! I ain't writing shit." He, he's like, mm -mm, I, I'm, "I'm keeping my career." But uh, but I don't blame uh, Ashton. Uh, them. Christina Ricci made a statement too. She did not reference this case. Yeah, but she made a, an Instagram post that you you know. Yeah, this is what we're talking about because she was referencing how uh, you know you have to think about when you're saying something how it doesn't really work to just say well. The guy I knew, he was a great guy. Yeah, okay, because well, yeah, yeah, because because that's all that that's all, all you know of him. You that doesn't mean he, he was you, something. You're just you weren't saying. just like De like 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 De like Dexter, like just like Dexter, for example. If you're like I'm, because I'm just the mailman, and he was always nice to me. Yeah, because you weren't a serial killer that was on Dexter's I table. Like all the neighbors at that interview, like man, he, he, he was, was always the friendliest dude. He's always he, Brought me food, like okay, yeah, yeah. But he just still murdered his whole family yesterday. What? What is your point? Yeah, but that, but yeah, but that <laughs> potato salad was great. Though. Like, no, that's not a you know, like, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm like, just because the dude threw a great barbecue on Fourth of July and had the greatest uh, potato salad in history, I'm not gonna go out uh, like, uh, yeah. I mean, my 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 impact statement was. My, my my letter would have been something like, yeah, I spent time with this dude and he never showed that side uh, to me. I would just stick to the damn facts. But it wouldn't be for a lighter sentence because what do you? Because what does that say to the victim's family? I think think the real key point here is is there was no, there's been no real admission of guilt from him. Yeah. So had there been a an idea of 
this was a really horrible time in his life. He made some really horrible decisions. Um, this is not the he should be held. Yeah, he should be held accountable known. for. And, yeah. Yeah. This is here's the person we knew, and I'm struggling. You know, reconciling the fact that this is something that happened in a stage of his life that I was around and I didn't recognize it. But the and and the person that I know is to be this. I could see an impact letter going if if he could get the help he needed, if he could, you know, uh, be brought back into society safely. I, you know, I, I would stand by him as a, I could see somebody wanting to stand by their family in that way. Yeah, because and, these these impacts, so that, these impact letters are meant to convince the judge to make the, the, the sentencing lighter. That's lighter. the whole Correct. point, though. So you're so, so whether whether no matter how they're trying to spin it, that was the that was the purpose of their letter. And you know uh, you know everybody knows that because the first one of the first things that Ashton Kutcher and Mila said on their apology was they were tried to remind people that that we we have charity organizations for supporting victims and and things like which to me would have been like then your then you guys should have had. Your your common sense should have said, and your and your representatives should have advised you that uh, joining that the impact uh, letters thing uh, thing on the on behalf of Masterson would probably not look good for people who have charity organizations to uh, to help victims of sexual uh, of of assaults and stuff like that. This is not going to not look uh, good for you. And they and they probably and I would have me personally I would have abstained from it. I wouldn't have wrote but one, but that's you, just me. If I try to. I always try to put myself in the position of if this was my child, if this is my child and I knew they did wrong, would I still That's more, that's more understandable. Yeah. Less? Yeah. That's more understandable. Yeah, my, but I'm your, but your other example, know. but your other example to that was, we don't know how close their bond is. Blood is not about blood. They could, they could feel like brothers and that's fine, but no, it's I'm more, uh, but it's more understand the, the people no, who no, are I'm against I'm using the strength of that, that relationship. That's my point. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm doing it because I know the strength of that relationship. That does not mean that that relationship couldn't be that strong for them. Yeah, that, that, I, 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 no, I agree. But not, and I, but I think, and I think the people I, who I'm are. Saying, though, what I'm saying though is I would still write that impact letter. I would write it differently. I would go, my child did wrong and they still need to have a punishment. I would maybe like their punishment to be less, but. I still think that my my child is a a a redeemable human being who maybe should have less punishment. I can see myself doing that for my child with a relationship that I was bonded to. So I have to apply that and not be a hypocrite to the rest of the world. I say I don't I don't really have a problem that they wrote the letters, but yet yeah, it it definitely was a tone deaf letter because yes. there was no acknowledgement that anybody did anything wrong yeah. that, 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 and that's true that's and that's bad but i don't necessarily agree uh with uh that with 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 that 100 percent uh tap because now with with my wife i mean joy's not one of my my children she's my wife but i would in that situation i think the i think the people who are coming after mila and and ashton would if if Mila and Ashton Kutcher were Masterson's father and mother, there would there would probably be no or as much uh, uh, backlash against them because you're literally their mother and father, but they're not. I can understand what you're saying with looking at, I, I, but I can't I, I can't do that. I can empathize with okay, other with other people's children. I can empathize if I can empathize with their parent with with Masterson's parents, but. But if their parents can kill their children and you can have a devolved relationship with your parent to child, why is it unex why is it out of this world for two people who don't have a blood relation to have the same sort of bond? I, no, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that it's. I'm not saying it's out of. Recognized as a parent to parent. But I'm. No, but I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that it, that it's out of this world. I'm saying that the the naysayers would have would have understood more. But with them not being blood related. They're gonna ba they're gonna bash them one hundred percent. How can you how can you be a? Yeah, they're 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 they're, they're one hundred percent gonna be like. You can tell me all you want that this is a, this is about just supporting your friend who you feel a family connection to, but it's at the, but it's still equally. Well, and then the judge made their statement on why they. It's they said it's still equally. I loved 
the judge's statement. Yeah. I didn't know the about this until Joy told me about this. Uh, go, go ahead. Well, read it real quick. Joy, you have it real fast. I don't have a display, but you, but you got it, right? Um, it said, Mr. Masterson, I know that you're sitting here steadfast in your claims of innocence and thus no doubt feeling victimized by a justice system that you feel has failed you. And I am sure you're asking yourself how you can be convicted of each charge of a SA incident mm -hmm. occurring 20 years ago based on the testimony of a woman that you believe is disgruntled and has a vendetta against you. But you were not convicted on the test of the testimony on one person, although the testimony of one person is sufficient evidence to 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 sustain a conviction, and you were not convicted based upon rumors, innuendo, gossip, or speculation. You were convicted based upon the testimony and evidence that 12 people from the community found to be credible. You were convicted because the victims testified about what occurred back in 2001 and 2003. You were convicted because each of the victims reported the grapes to someone shortly after the grapes occurred also back in 2001-2003. Jane Doe 2 told her mother and friends thus reporting. Jane Doe 1 reported to Scientology officials and also wrote letters to Scientology's International Justice Chief reporting it. They also reported to the Los Angeles Police Department almost approximately a year later and Jane Doe 3 reported to Scientology ethics officers and higher officials within the Scientology organization shortly after. In addition, shortly after, you paid Jane Doe approximately $400,000 to keep quiet about the char charged incident. And while some may argue that whether you believed her story was true or not, you just didn't want the bad publicity she was seeking money from you, close to half a million dollars is an awful lot to pay for the silence about an incident that you claim never happened. The events as relayed by the victims were similar to each other and during that time the victims told other people about the <clears throat> grapes shortly after the grapes had occurred. The victims were still Scientologists. They had not left the organization yet. So the argument that they only colluded with each other decades later after leaving Scientology to get money from you doesn't make sense in light of their earlier reporting, nor does it diminish the truth or impact of the earlier statements made at or near the time when they had no motive to life retaliate or gain money. And then she went on to list out all of, for each count, how much he got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that's pretty much a- I loved her statement. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know about that until today that uh, that, 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 that even, was uh was out there so the judge even had their own <laughs> impact i thought statement. she did a really wonderful job laying it out for him because i think one of the things that's really recognizable with this whole scenario is that he is a straight narcissist who cannot recognize his bad behavior and cannot recognize the harm that he's caused so he sees himself as a victim because that's how he his narrative has been created mm -hmm. and so the fact that she called out his victimhood and really laid it out how he was not a victim and how this was not things working against him or people trying to take advantage of him about how this was because of his actions and his contributions to this and that it, this was his doing, no one else's. I, I just, I love that she really made it a, 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 a whole list scenario for him to where he could not be the victim yeah everybody in the chat is in, in agreement that uh like pierre kelly says that uh kutcher and kunis should have wrote better apology letters uh uh to matt yeah acknowledging what acknowledging what uh what he did would have been a good start but not doing that yeah i mean it was it was it was swift how fast people started to uh the question, what do you think? Is this going to impact their uh, their careers? What do you think overall, round the table? What do you think? Is, is this going to impact negatively the the Kunis and uh, Kutcher's career? What do you think, Taps? I honestly don't really don't care so. if it does or not. <laughs> I just, I think it's, I think the focus needs to genuinely be off of them and be put on him and really... I don't like people trying to pull other people into the problem. I, I think the focus needs to be him. He did horrendous things. 
Yeah. And he needs to pay for that. And he needs to be the focus of that and not pull other people in and create focus away from that. What was the sentencing? Uh, was 30 to 30, life? 30 to life. 30 years 30. of life. Yeah. 15 and 15 consecutively. So yeah. it can't be lessened. Right. Like in the sense of, you know, he would, he, they could be stacked on top. What is he like 40? In, yeah. In his 40s. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that. So that's a substantial amount of time. That's that's right. That's that covers the the main topic of uh, the I guess the entertainment and the trending topic uh, side of it. Let's go into uh, Tabitha's. Uh, this is this was this was what Tabitha majored in in college. The movie Showgirls. It's Throwback Thursday, so instead of just talking about the movies that just turning twenty and ten years old, I want to make it about a specific movie. For, so to, for us to throw it back to so since professor uh, uh tabs is all about let's let's what what was showgirls and and how did it affect you you uh, ah, show, <laughs> that's a loaded showgirls question a, uh, uh-huh showgirls was a uh, coming of age movie for me uh it is what spurred my lesbianism it is what made me realize that i love women mm-hmm. so uh I was having a sleepover with my uh, one of my friends at the time, and we had it on VHS, and I snuck it, knew, knowing that I wasn't supposed to watch it because mm. I was too young. Oh, and, I I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. And, and guys, let, I just turned her volume up. Let me know if it worked later on. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and so, like, um, I was in middle school, so I knew I wasn't supposed to watch it. So I snuck it. I had a, a little mini TV and VCR in my room, and my friend and I started watching it in um, my bedroom at like 1 a.m. in the morning. And lo and behold, I discovered I loved boobies. Like really, really loved boobies. So I love Saved by and, the Bell and I love boobs. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I grew up watching Saved by the Bell. So I was already interested in the fact because, you know, of course she's in it. And then, yeah, I was very much about that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did it for me for sure. The w- one thing I remember about that movie was when uh because this movie had it all i mean it had it had it had sex it, it had uh violence it had uh it, like there was topics of, of assault it had interracial uh relations i mean yeah. like the, this this movie like it 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 was going it, there was a line it was like fuck that line we're going <laughs> we're, we're just telling this story and the the black dude in there uh, that that really liked her character and was was trying to uh, be in a, in a relationship with with her, I because I remember seeing him and thinking that's the dude from uh, from Speed that uh, <laughs> that that Keanu Reeves took his car and the phone and oh, <laughs> that take the that he was like either. take the phone like like I remember that that dude has always been funny to me I like that actor <laughs> like but that that, that but scene that's... where he got jealous when uh he watched he saw her do that that private dance uh you know for the for the for mm-hmm. what was the, the two i guess they would be the like kind of antagonist type of uh character yeah. and he his jealousy he was like he was like you fucked those and she was like, and she was like i didn't fuck uh, uh yes you did you fucked both of them everybody was getting he said, he said the disease and everybody was getting that disease and shit. it was i was like this this movie was was like I've never seen a movie that shocking since uh like kids or clerks and things like that and this one was meant to be like a mainstream type of movie and they and they held on to that NC17 they didn't want to if I remember correctly the director didn't want to let that go he wanted and this, it was it, it was, it, it, dirty. was like, it was it was it is dirty dirty like there's a scene where like she's like you know, he's like sliding his hand down her pants and she's on her period. And oh, shit. Yeah. oh, and oh like, that, that's it. You that's my favorite yeah. part. That was the part. Yeah, uh, she I can't because I'm on my on my period. He's like bullshit. And she's like, go ahead and check. <laughs> and his yeah. and his response to that is something I okay. said for years. I got towels. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and 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 still practice to this day. Right, babe? <laughs> She's like, don't be. She's like, don't be putting me on camera after saying some crap like that. Yes, I can hear tabs better now. Yeah, we can. Okay, good. Okay, okay. I fixed the. I figured out the volume. Um, but yeah, this you so so Miss uh, Naughty Girl sneaking around watching. How old were you when this movie came out? Literally. 
literally like seventh grade. How old was I? What year did it? What, what, so, year, what year did this come out again? Like, wasn't oh it like ninety nine or two thousand? Was it a nineties movie or two thousand? No, this is a no. It's no, it's not a two thousands movie. It's a nineties movie. This is a nineties movie. Yeah. Let me. I forgot yeah. to look that up. Showgirls movie. Uh, it Can't, had to be early. In 95. I was 15. Oh, yeah. I was 15 yeah. watching this movie, locking my door and, and rewinding that pool I scene. Was 20. You were 20. Yeah, you were 20. You're like, eh, I, you skipped it. They, this movie, <laughs> this, this, this movie, this topic, I remember I made a video on this channel about the definition of the word campy. And I used this uh, movie as an example about campy uh, movies. And I think I had her. Uh, uh, and I don't know if it was the, her licking the pole uh, image, which some people on YouTube are saying is the, is the thing that really ended her career, her licking that pole. If this movie was made what? today, it, was ma it would probably have won an Oscar. <laughs> and yeah. and then when Drew, and then when... Uh, they weren't ready to see old Saved by the Bell. They, they, yeah, exactly. But that was what was, that's what made it fascinating, that she was totally mm -hmm. trying to shed the whole Saved by the Bell thing. Because when when uh, what's her name um, did a, a a similar type of movie uh, as uh, not I'm not I was about to say Drew there's Barry. so many that's done a similar type of movie yeah you um, uh, uh, Demi no 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 G, what's her name G I Jane what's her name um, Demi, Demi, Moore. Demi Moore Demi Moore when Demi Moore did hers they, yeah, they didn't Demi give her Moore shit about it Ex but exactly but this but this movie was talking about subject matters that were like like real problems i mean the that, that well here's the difference yeah huh? you got you got it this is the major difference one is playboy one is hustler yeah the showgirls is hustler it's a little too dirty for mainstream right striptease was playboy it was pretty fine it had that nice filter over it that made it look nice and to you could swallow you know, it this movie would not get an oscar today because today people are even more oh my god there's a boob. All the kids, everyone, everyone's kids gonna see something. Oh my god! They trip out about everything way more than they did. The, 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 I'm talking about the, the I'm talking about the the writer and the director's um, acknowledgement of the assaults that go on in that industry and the yeah. and then thing like the tackling that subject matter shot because that was, was back when 90s when you. people weren't like were, was where people were still telling women to uh you know to be grateful and be, keep Thank your you. mouth shut and, yep. and and you're and you're never gonna you're never gonna end to stop it you're you're, you're nobody compared to the the the, the powers no, that I'm be i'm just saying if they put it out right now it's not I, like people I, would I, receive it better i, I we have well, so oh well many... i see what you're saying but I'm talking about I'm talking about that message though, because that was because it was Saved by the Bell, the girl from Saved by the Bell, and whatnot. the The real message behind that movie was overlooked. What they were really trying to say, and and everybody just focused on, oh my God, Jesse showed her boobs. I'm like, oh, there, there were that was great. I loved it. I know Tabitha really loved it, but the sto the you know story. Who was Go on, go ahead. Do you know who is underrated though within that? That you've mentioned her her scenes and what she had to experience in the movie, but no one actually mentions the, her as an actor. The black girl, the or, actor who, uh, who, yeah, Gina Gina Rivera, Gina Rivera. Anyways, she was a highly underrated actor for yeah. that movie. She played that role so well. Yeah, like so well. And they and they fo they focused on all the uh, the wrong things about about uh -huh. that movie, pretty much calling it a a, a pro uh, uh that that barely uh, missed the X and got and made it to NC seventeen. <laughs> that that it was not the the point of the uh, that the the toxic environment, the uh, the gaslighting, the manipulation, the yep. the uh, like in some ways, like in, in some situations, probably like trafficking and stuff. It, this this movie covered yeah. so many topics. And, well, and, it, cover, it covered a lot of circumstance, a yeah. lot of like underground circumstance that happens with women in that industry who are in the, you know, the the ladies of the night industry who are really wanting to be dancers who have some skill set, but their circumstance never allowed them to have that opportunity. And it really was that, you know, pull yourself up from the bootstrap female driven storyline where she wanted to be successful in, in an industry that wasn't going to allow it. Yeah. And it, 
then it showed all the shit and abuse that, you know, you had to go through to be in that industry. And that's, that stuff's real. And it's and and still it, going on to this day. Like what, what, what is Lizzo's, Lizzo's uh, dance yes. talking about? And the, yes. and the, and the fact that we don't, and the, the stigma about, about sex work isn't the way it used yep. to be, uh, isn't what it used yeah. to be. That's why I think this movie probably, maybe it wouldn't have made, maybe it wouldn't have, obviously, but maybe it wouldn't have made Oscar buzz, but it would have been, uh, I We've think had it would worse been... out. Hmm? It what? There's already been worse out. Oh yeah. You've had the J Lo stripper movie. You've had so many. What sex was that movie called? Hustler. Hustler. Have... No, I'm talking about Hustler. Thing. Yeah. I'm talking about the so many... 17 part of it, not the movie itself. Like, see, they we they have so many. I mean, they lose their they lose their shit over Cardi B and Meg The Stallion twerking on a stage. Right, put their clothes on, but they shake their ass, and we're we are we are totally losing it because now all the children are corrupted, and everyone's going to hell. No, that's Ben Shapiro over there trying to trying to campaign for dry ass pussy. I don't know what the hell this problem is. I don't know what that. And why I'm would you Why going, would you want that? And I'm over here going. They've been doing this on MTV for a million years. Yeah, and you Forever. know it. So don't let your kid watch this. Yeah, just don't. Yeah. Does anybody for has everyone forgotten about every white eighties hairband video that aired on TV? That's what I'm saying. And big what hair, big ladies like were doing new. Yeah. And I'm like, and you yeah. know what's coming on. So then, don't turn it on. Don't watch it. Watch something. Hey, else. Cardi B even said when she got on stage, "Put your kids to bed." Like, yeah. I don't know for this wet ass pussy. Expect something different. <laughs> watch. Don't watch it. Put your kids to bed for this. <laughs> she said it. She said, get them out of the fucking living room. Yeah. Put them to bed. Yeah. So you can get this wet ass. <laughs> God, now I will say this. One thing that cool sex scene is the most unrealistic yeah. scenario I've, I've yeah. ever seen in my entire life. One. I tried. No pool scene. Pool sex scene is ever enjoyable. You want that? You want to Two. get that chlor? You want that chlorine? <laughs> That's chlorine it's thing. For your body. <laughs> Don't do it. Bad for you. Don't Jeez. do it. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna. But but I'm not gonna lie. I got I, I got a lot of my uh, a lot of my moves and my stroke came came from uh from. Uh, you cannot stroke like that. I got a lot of I got a lot of tips. From uh from that movie, a lot. There's too many guys out there that try to base their stroke game on pornos, knowing full yeah. well, that, no, that's not that's not what people want. No. That's not what no. you want. Yeah, uh, y'all, that's what y'all all want. Y'all love it. Uh, is it no. the? Oh, here we go. I was trying to find the comments. Uh, the Dragon Movie Guy says, I was working at the theater when it came out and protesters were outside the theater protesting the NC-17 and being all anti-LGBTQ. That yeah, but uh, that's I mean that definitely yeah, probably would have would would still uh, uh would have happened, you know you know what 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 actor like let's say this movie didn't come out in ninety five let's say this movie was coming out in twenty twenty three what would be the equivalent of a because uh, she played Jesse on Say by the Bell what would be the equivalent show, and the equivalent actor doing something uh like but it wouldn't Any be a Disney stick. princess it'd It'd be, it would have to be, be somebody Disney. from somebody from Disney, Disney yeah Nickelodeon yeah, yeah. Any Disney princess yeah and the little the the black the, the what's the the black actress who played little mermaid I can't think of her name right now I can't hear you I'm sorry. yeah Haley Bailey yeah but her yes but, her it, well no her well her career is was is, is is uh she's known for more than just that one for one thing i mean she has a, su- a successful but music she, career but her innocent like character driven ideology what, of who she is that, that's what y'all that's what y'all like, think i've seen Haley and her sister's instagrams they ain't they ain't innocent nothing they are real she looked good in that dress for the vmas i was like God, damn. no no i'm talking but i'm talking uh, about have geez. you seen have you ever seen Haley and her sister's uh instagram posts and tiktoks and stuff when they go live they don't give a fuck no. they they are raw <laughs> they do not they and basically like hannah montana Pre her already doing her own Correct. crazy stuff. Basically, yeah. Miley, just, literally what happened to Miley Cyrus. Literally, was, yep. when, when she was Hannah Montana. But at least Jesse had a <laughs> yeah. body, though. 
Well, yeah, I'll give you that. I give you that. <laughs> yeah, I knew you wasn't gonna disagree with me on that one. No, I gave you that. I, I, mean, I honestly, I'm I was, not picky or anything, but I was yeah. honestly surprised that it it that it it worked against her career because I think I, wasn't. That, I think that the snowball effect of just bashing it for the sake of bashing it was just was just the entertainment like even on, even in scream too he's like what's your favorite scary movie showgirls it was i mean like they just they're just bashing other movies and other actors for nothing just to just to be just to ride the uh, it was too raw for the time it right. just was yeah too raw and and it 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 killed her career because she really did play the character well. She did great she as an actress it. for what, she, yeah, for it what did, she, she was did not deserve. To do. That movie did not deserve all those Razzies. It, I just, that's why I said I felt like it was just a snowball of just dogpiling onto it. It didn't deserve all that. And, and then she ended it was up just too gritty and stars. too raw and too dirty. It really was. <laughs> Uh, I didn't watch the new Saved by the Bell stuff, but I saw a commercial that on the the, the new stuff on Peacock that that. They had a scene where they were in Vegas, uh, her, Kelly Kapowski, and Lisa Turtle, and they were trying to get this guy's attention or something and said, well, let's just do what we what people would do in Vegas. And then she went into her whole routine ah. to get the guy's attention, and he freaked the guy out. And Kelly and, Tur and Lisa were like, what the hell was that? And she was like, you said do Vegas. And they were like, what the hell did you happen to you in Vegas? And you're like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I've always meant to watch that episode because I thought that was, I only saw the commercial. I said that was, the fact that she's able to joke about it now, because like yeah. you said, it was a, a Dancing with the Stars, right? She she did the, no, she did the routine from Say by the Bells. She, no, no, I'm just saying, it wasn't really a comeback necessarily, but like you didn't see her. She yeah. didn't do anything. No, yeah. no, yeah, she was, she was on, not on anything. She did Dancing with the Stars. Yep. <laughs> I, I, and and Tabitha's is right. She played that that role the way it was it was written perfect she played it i can't see anybody else doing as good as she, there, maybe, there, maybe there could have been ten thousand to a billion uh, uh, uh other actors that would have done a better job but for her to come from where she started to crushing it so it showed me that she 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 had she had a she i mean she has the the look she has she's got she's tall as hell and she danced her ass off and she played mm -hmm. the role i thought that it was yeah. gonna do the opposite for her career or maybe at least have a moderate act movie uh, career. I thought that that she would be a standout uh, besides that. And then I will say I had the biggest crush, and I do mean biggest crush on the chick that's on the photo right now, the mm -hmm. Gina chick. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Gina, Gina something. Gershon. Yes, she has always been sexy, and boy. Her in that movie, man, did something to me with her accent, her being a Texan accent. And, oh, I was all about it. All yeah. about it. Such a crush on her. Peter Lang says, coincidentally, I was too young to watch uh, to watch it, too, uh, at 12. And it made me realize I love <laughs> women in boobs, too. <laughs> hey, like you got to have it at some point. I mean, a lot. She, she uh, uh, Gina, uh, Gina, and then uh, Dragon telling us that, yeah, it was uh, Gina. Uh, Gershon. Gina, yeah. Uh, yeah, Gina Gershon. Tabitha, Tabitha loves it, and so did I. Uh, <laughs> yes. uh, but yeah, I mean, that, uh, will people please stop hating on Lizzo? I mean, I mean. If, uh, that's that, a topic for another day. That gets yeah. in depth. I mean, I was just bringing up the, the, the dancers example. Um, but I feel like this movie would, would be appreciated for the, the art that it, because if, uh, I felt like, um, Jennifer's body was starting to get some some uh, some love and whatnot. So I feel like I think Showgirls needs to get that same type of uh, uh, of love. Jennifer's right. body is a cult classic too. Yeah, like, it, beca it became a cult, cult classic, but it was it's a cult classic. But it, but when it first came out, it was it was they, they just liked the dog yeah. pile against uh, what's they, her, Megan. They were like she's horrible acting, blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah, but she but but for that character, she crushed it. That character, but. Uh, any uh, any movie nowadays should pale in comparison to the real life that Miley Cyrus did post Hannah Montana. <laughs> That's what Dragon Movie Guy said. Um, what was that? That was it for that. Real. Uh, we're gonna do uh, the last two topics real fast because it's really is it is really getting late. So the last uh, topic. The last. Uh, now just I'll introduce it real quick myself. Uh, so we saw uh, the what was it? The Aquaman uh, uh, trailer, and uh, it made me think. 
you know, this is the end of the DCEU era. This is Aquaman 2 is going to be the final movie. It should have been Flash. That should have been the movie that encapped it. But Aquaman 2 is going to be the, the thing that ends the, the run of the DCEU that started with uh, Man of Steel, Henry Cavill's Man of Steel, and now we'll end with Aquaman uh, 2. So after we watched the, the trailer, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. When I saw the trailer, I was, I, before I saw the trailer, I was expecting it to to look uh, bad b- look bad but good. it looked i i thought it looked good. good what do you what did you say Beth? um I, the trailer the anyway, trailer at least looks better than the fir- first it might be better to be honest uh john i know i say his name a lot i'm about to say it again john campia said that uh it it you could tell that in this trailer that the character who plays black manta he was more of a henchman in part one but in this one, you can feel like he is the main threat. Like he's no, mm-hmm. and um, so it's it. It looked it looked good. Is I that, thought is that the Insidious dude? The guy from The Conjuring, Insidious. Yeah, the the, the guy playing the, the guy playing Aquaman's brother. Okay. He was in part one. Yeah. The guy playing his brother. Yeah, he's in part one. Tab, did you get a chance to t- to check this one out? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm actually. Did I you see Aquaman one? Agree with no, hmm. no. But I'm never really a big, big fan of Aquaman, but uh, I watched the trailer and I will say the trailer looked actually quite decent. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it looked like it's still going to be as funny as the first one and, and uh, the yeah. the visual effects and stuff. I mean, the first one was a surprise. It's the only DC movie, DCEU movie to make a billion dollars. It, it, it made a billion dollars, which was, was shocked a lot of people. This this one won't. <laughs> this one won't make a billion Amber dollars. Amber Heard is reduced to like a two seconds she that's what that's what i was looking for <laughs> after the whole amber heard johnny depp thing and the whole the campaign to remove her from this movie i almost didn't even notice it i i, I barely like, noticed okay. it it was uh let me see if i let me see if i can find it's it I, oh, toward, I still got i still got showgirls on, on the yours very end, yeah yeah and you I, I really did i right after it right after it happened i went oh that was her okay yeah there, okay. there it is right oh, there oh gosh i missed it yeah, that that moment right there. That's the only time you see Amber Heard be, uh, behind a broken glass. You be- <laughs> that's okay. it. And then they and they and they cover up like 10% of her face <laughs> on it. Okay. So and they did that on purpose. Yeah. They they she is a she is his wife in this movie. She is the mother of his child and and this by the, by the time in this movie they got together in part 1 and then uh, they fell in love by the end of part 1 and now she's the queen of Atlantis. And a millisecond of, of, of a frame that you bear, that you barely would have caught, and I was like, "Wow, they they are sticking to their their promise. They are going to not promote Amber Heard as much." So good that, for them. That's yeah. Let's see. That's that's it. But anyway, that that uh, it made me think about uh, where this is going to rank as far as uh, DC movies, and I wanted to. I was gonna have a whole since, but since we went long on the on everything else, I'm not gonna go long on this one at all. Let me let me pull it up real fast. The uh, shoot, I don't have the link. There we go. Joy, we gotta move. We gotta remove words like real fast from his <laughs> vocabulary. How how dare you? I can. Joy knows that I can be real fast. <laughs> I'm sure she does. <laughs> Uh, here we go. You got to remove words like real. F- you can't censor me. I will I. <laughs> she'll, she'll never be king. <laughs> we got to remove words like real fast. How dare like like okay, I got a question for you Tabs. How how dare you? <laughs> so, real fast, I have the uh-huh. um, I have from uh, Box Office Mojo the uh, rundown of I would uh, I want to zoom in on it. Uh, uh, let's see if I close I can get it. That's good enough. A break a rundown of the DC Extended Universe, the DCEU franchise, and this is the well this is domestic, but Aquaman is in number two domestically, but it made over it's the only one to make over a, a billion dollars. Wonder Woman domestically made over four hundred million. Uh, Aquaman three hundred. Uh, Batman vs Superman th- uh, three uh, hundred, Suicide Squad three, Man of Steel two, almost making three, Justice League two, Black Adam one sixty eight, and it just gets worse and worse and worse from there. There's uh, there hasn't been a movie to make a total of over four hundred million since like two thousand eighteen. All these like only a few of these movies have made a total, a, a grand total like Wonder Woman total eight 
800 uh, million. Uh, Aquaman made a billion. Batman versus Superman, I think, made 900. And then everything else is pretty much a lot. Of, a lot of the rest of, of, of like, like total of like 200, 300. Like no, they, they, none of them. Uh, the majority of them have cracked 400. The majority. I mean, the majority of them have not cracked 400 million total. What I'm talking about worldwide. Uh, I, my prediction is that, and you guys can put, comment below what you guys think. I don't. I don't know if, if Joy if, or Tabs you care about this subject, but I think that. I think Aquaman will break that curse. I think this will make over 500 million total. It'll be the first DC movie in a long time to, to, to cross over 400 million. I think this one, because the first one made a billion. Jason Momoa is still a, a draw. He was the best thing in Fast X. He's still, he's still his energetic, fun-loving self. The women love him. Tabs loves him. She the doesn't want to admit do. it. Yeah. Ladies love Cool J. I think this is going to The be ladies good. love the lady love Aquaman. He gets it wet. Keeps it wet. He does. <laughs> like, I don't like the he's way a he's a gusher. That's, he's a gusher, that's for sure. Why? He's a, oh, wow. okay. All right. L l l listen, NC-17. Calm down. It's very moist. Very moist. <laughs> anyway, anywho. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's weird. Uh, Blue Beetle. Blue, look at this. Blue Beetle just came out. It's, it has, it's only made 114 total. 114 oh. total. That's the total. Yeah, it's it's getting bad out there. Shazam Fury of the Gods, 133 total. So it's been they've been getting worse and worse. So that reboot is necessary. I think this one's gonna break that curse. It'll I think it'll make over 500 million. Guys, let, let us know in the chat. What do you guys think that Aquaman 2 will make? Um, do you think it will make some decent money? Do you think it'll make a billion? It's not gonna make it. No, it's not I gonna think make it. I think it would probably be at least the half the, the half, million. Yeah, half a billion. Yeah, half a billion. Half a uh, five hundred mil. Yeah, I think it will. I think easily, easily. This is Jason Momoa. He's the uh, he's the sea daddy. <laughs> he's the I mean, it looked like it had a nice mix, and at least in the trailer of comedy and action and like. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. He's the water daddy, right? Right. Taps. Water daddy. Yes. Yes. All right. I mean, uh, minus the daddy. But, oh, minus the daddy, my bad. All right, last but not least, let's move on to the last topic, which was um, the concept of go woke, go broke. Let me let me get out of this. I'm going to make you do a time check. It's after 10. Okay. So the whole thing about go woke, go broke is a, a thing that if you make your movies too woke or with too much of a message or whatever, blah, 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 that it'll it won't make any money. I don't agree with that. Why? Because my my point is this: Why is it that some of the highest grossing uh, movies are considered, by their definition of what woke is, are, are these woke uh, movies? And from okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to find the link. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mention it out. I got my list right here. So I have a list of movies that I would I guess would be considered uh, woke, but these are like the high. Uh, this is uh, these are woke that made bank, like movies like Get Out. Is considered a woke movie. Uh, Wally -E is considered woke because it's about what about the environment and things like that, right? Yeah. Did, did everybody see Wally? -E? Who, who doesn't love Wally? -E? Yeah. Everybody loves Wally. -E. Yeah. Uh, love Cap Wall -E. Now this one I know why it was hit. Captain Marvel was considered a Brie Larson ever since all because Brie Larson said that they need to include more outlets uh, that match the like for talking about Black Panther. If you if your movie's about black people and has an all black cast and and, and and geared towards Africa and things like that, why do most of the outlets that you invite to watch in these screenings are are white outlets? Why don't you get the black yeah. outlets to join? That's all she said. But the the narrative was spent to Brie Larson doesn't like white people. Like where did they go? like so it was it was called a woke movie, but it made a billion dollars. Uh, black Panther woke billion dollars avatar one and two that does not even get into avatar how much money avatar one and two made it, and, yeah and then the latest most recent woke will go broke yeah, i know it's my favorite barbie went uh went uh, that no and then here was the funny thing about barbie the second it crossed the billion dollars all of a sudden those those, those channels started to change their tune uh, it, it isn't really a woke movie it's a uh, it's actually a conservative movie like bull, like bullshit don't know bullshit don't don't try they they really tried to uh, to, to spin it that that it wasn't Barbie a woke is movie. not a conservative movie yeah i mean but and at the same time it, it is not their definition of woke either it was just a movie about barbie it was a good it was just a movie 
I mean, it was a feminist movement about a female lead getting to dictate the narrative of the movie. Yeah. And when, and when people hear feminists, they that's that's what they think. They think it's all about uh, it's, it's, it's about it's about equality. It's I mean, the, the, the Kins, the Kins felt like they were being treated unfairly. And they and they and they wanted uh and they, and they and they fought for what they wanted. They they probably went about it the wrong way, but they fought. And uh, I, I love I still love that scene. He said, "Can we have a, a seat on the Supreme Court?" No. Yeah. <laughs> I know that was great. They were like they were that like hey. a lesser position. They're like uh, like 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 don't push it, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this is still yeah. Barbie land, uh, but uh, but it was considered a woke movie. Now the ones that did go broke, for example, the ones that they went after, Ghostbusters, the 2016 all female uh, one. But I enjoyed that movie all the I way up too. to the end. the The way it ended, I didn't like. The ending was so bad. But leading up to it, the comedy and all that, it was funny. But the but yeah. it, I just felt like the end fell fell on the face. You said you you liked uh, Ghostbusters. Liked that movie. I, like I didn't that. have any problems I with it. Yeah, we uh, yeah, we saw it together, right? We did, we didn't have anything against it. What the heck is it? Oh, uh, other other. I mean, I love Leslie Jones. And oh yeah. Uh, Kate McKinnon, they always crack me up. Uh, Terminator, uh, Dark Fate. They considered that because the the new lead was a, a it was all female uh, lead. Yeah, I, I saw. Yeah, uh, Birds of Prey. Um, uh, you know, the Emancipation of Harley Quinn. Considered. Oh, okay. I mean, when when she finally when she was on film when she was breaking away from Mr. J and going and going independent, and I'm I'm still hoping for Harley and, and Poison Ivy. I'm st- tabs. I'm, you've got to watch that damn cartoon. Uh, I know. I know. And then the one that's on the screen right next to you right now, um, Lightyear. That was that that was a flop. It made it, these are the yeah, movies. That was the ones that didn't make. Um, they they didn't like it because there was a scene where one of the the, the 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 astronauts that were they were uh, a, a lesbian yeah. couple. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know oh, I missed it. Real quick before we go. And it was me... like the most subtle, by the way. It was the most it was it was be- you you might you might they, they acted like it was showgirls. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like the most subtle. <laughs> uh before we get out of here, uh Peter Lane, appreciate you, man, giving us uh, a super chat here. It says Aquaman will make money as long as he's shirtless. Go woke, go broke is nonsense. Everything is woke. Have you people uh, seen Star Trek? I I'm not a Trekkie. I know what you mean. I I'm not a Trekkie, but but um, I know all all Trekkie stuff, but not new. Not, not nothing. Tra- new. Tabs, you're the biggest Trekkie in the world. What do you love? Don't you love Star Trek? And, well, you'd be surprised. I had to grow up watching that crap. My dad's a full <laughs> blown <crap>. original Trekkie. <laughs> I I watched a lot of the original because yeah, my aunt and them watched it. Yeah. And then I also like the one with Jean Luc Picard. I yeah. love him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love yeah. But I, anything that came after that, I didn't I didn't watch it. That's what she said. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna let you guys uh get out of here. I'm gonna and I'm gonna finish yes. off with and talk with the uh the group chat for the we got your mail portion of it. But before I let you go, Tabs, if people want to find you online, where can they find you? You can find me at uh let's have fun zero one two on TikTok and tap at the dot Jordan dot eighteen on Instagram. That's me. And for the Mrs. Christopher Fagan, babe, if people want to find you, where can they find you? My TikTok is Viola Fagan and my Instagram is Scrub Hats and More by Joy. And uh, oh, I forgot to change that in the background. Uh, highest grossing woke movies. All right, guys. Uh, that's uh, that's the. Oh, go ahead, babe. Real fast, Peter sent another super chat saying he will not talk about She Hulk out of respect for Tabs. I want. I'm going to go back into. <laughs> I'm going to go back into. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, because uh, because of the, I love the twerking. Now, I I didn't like the. Fa- I was hoping that it was going to be more of a Law and Order or Suits type or Ally McBeal type of focus and focus more on the law stuff. But they it 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 made a it made a turn into some weird uh, direction. It kind of didn't make sense. So, but She Hulk might have a sequel. I loved it. I I yeah. I, 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 I love the potential of it. So hopefully it'll. it'll I th- if they can su- make it like suits, I, I think that would be. I want more. I want more law stuff. I don't know. I feel like that's what I want. But that's me. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm gonna. I'll. I'm gonna take it from here. I'm gonna talk with the guys in the chat and uh, appreciate you guys. You can. Uh, thanks for helping me out doing this episode of the rundown. Appreciate taps. Bye. Later. Have a good one. Now get out of here. Let me try to get rid of your zoom. <laughs> Where's your zoom at? There we go. All right.
Tabs out of the building. I'm gonna keep the show going myself, and I'll let me go through your uh, your comments, guys. So, because I know I with with being gone for uh, as long as we were, and trying to get back into the swing of things, I I know I I dropped the ball on it. I even started later than what I wanted. So let me. I'm gonna go back. Maybe you, I mean you're you're good. If you I mean if you want to stay, you can stay. It's, I gotta go get us something to eat because it's ten. I already see what I want for, for dinner. <laughs> I had to hurry up and switch camera before y'all y'all uh, got the uh, the booty shot. That's mine. Y'all can't get that. But I'm gonna stick around uh, with you guys because I know I missed a lot of your comments. Uh, let's see. We were talking. Is it drag? The going back to the strike uh, talk. That's uh, that strike won't affect the strike at all. But the audience uh, protesting is just plain stupid. Uh, doesn't raise awareness. Just ruins the experience for all the audience to try. Uh yeah, like I said, I was telling Tabs. I I understand Tabs' position on it, and you got to make it hurt and blah 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 and all that stuff. But I'm still on the side of of the fact that there's more, like like the, well, you know how they say there's more to life than like if if I have my own union, if if I'm a like I, I use janitors as the example. If there's a janitors union that works in Hollywood or on a, or on movie sets, or work for NBC or Warner Brothers and stuff like that, and they're okay with their deal, like as long as like like the, we'll, we janitors will go on strike too if you're not paying us fair for the the shit that we literally have to clean up and throw away and stuff like that, and you're not and you're not paying us fairly, we'll go on strike too, and that'll that'll affect your your movies and stuff like that. But if the janitors went on strike, the actors didn't wouldn't wasn't going to stop working in solidarity to that they would have they would have probably like we support them the janitors we support the writers but when the writers went on strike the actors didn't just stop but now that the actors decided to stop but then the reason why the actors went on strike were for a lot of separate reasons why the writers were uh were, on, were protesting and on strike but while the but those months when the writer was on strike the actors didn't stop working they showed solidarity but they didn't stop um, uh earning so why should they they thought that at the time they didn't uh, and I'm sure the writers would have appreciated it on day one when the writers went on strike on day one. They would have appreciated it if all of Hollywood would have stopped for them, but they didn't. But now that they're both striking and the makeup artists and the stagehands and stuff want, are, are desperately now looking for work because now they're being. The, but like if the if the stagehands weren't being uh, were, were going on strike and the actors weren't on strike, would the actors have stopped promoting stuff and would the actors have stopped going to shows and get? No, they would have gone and get make and make their money. So it's like, so why are we blaming other groups for trying to pay their bills and work just so we can stick? I understand sticking it to the 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 uh, producers because they're 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 taking too much of the pot. But the whole everybody has to suffer, even the ones who aren't striking, even the ones who do uh, have a, feel like they have a fair deal. I just I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah, I try to make it hurt for the, the people who are causing the problems. But there's casualties of war, man. And that's not always right. Uh, watch the show. I guess I'm, that's bumping into some conversations that you guys were having. Dragon continues on uh, loving the live stream, by the way. I appreciate it, man. I, I we were sick for like. Uh, we got the Kobe, the kids uh, he brought it to us when school started. And um, I got COVID back in when it 2000 was it December of 2000. The first I got it uh, years ago. And then now it's, it's the numbers are coming back up again. And I got it again. Uh, last time, my, my wife, you know, Joy is a nurse. She works in hospitals. And, and I was afraid that she was going to get it real bad. And she never got it when it was the when the pandemic first started she never got it i got it the kids uh got it um uh she never got it and she was the most at risk she was the one going to hospitals and she never got it but this time finally there was, i'll put it to you like this because this is the rundown after dark by the way look i'll put it to you like this there was something that happened that and uh, that happened Hours before my symptoms started, let me just put it like that, where I was shocked that Joy didn't catch it. I was like, after that, you still test negative? Damn, you were like a, you, you a Terminator. You, but then a week later, so it was it was one of those situations. They say that by the time you get your, sometimes by the time you get your symptoms, you've probably already had it for like a week. 
or, or so. And it was something like that. So when my symptoms started to die down, she still was testing negative. And then when I was out of quarantine, the second I was a day away from being out of quarantine or the day after I was out of quarantine and I could, me and her could be in the same room again. That was when she, that was when it, it, it hit her. And that's what delayed it uh, another week. So I would have, the show would have only been gone for like a week. But when, when it, the timeline of it, when it hit me and then it later it hit her, I was like, let me just give it two weeks because I like to have people here in the studio. Uh, Tabs wasn't, uh, Tabs said that she, the only reason why Tabs wasn't here today was because it was raining uh, and whatnot. So, but otherwise she would have been here, but yeah, we're, we're off. We're fine. And, uh, and we're glad to be uh, back, but I appreciate you. I'm glad you liked the show, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm working behind the scenes to try to make it better. I'm going to go back to another uh, platform that I was using to live stream back on uh, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube simultaneously. Hopefully get it back on TikTok and all that stuff ag uh, again uh, at the same time. Uh, but but right now it's just on uh, on YouTube. But uh, let's see. I think I clicked on it and I, I kicked away from it. Uh, that strike won't affect the strike at all. But audience, oh, I think I already clicked on that one. Doesn't raise awareness. Yeah, I already clicked on that one. Live stream. Turn up tab with his mic, and we figured that out. I figured it out later. Peter Lang. So does every late night show, reality show, game show, talk show, etc. Shut down. What about uh, reviewers? No. If you're not like like shows like mine, like if because I, I talk about the news, I'll talk about uh, trending. To, I'll talk about things. And, and on top of that, I'm not a member of these things. And and if but if I had an actor, if I was doing an interview, I've interviewed actors. So if I was to interview an actor it'd be, I'd be, and if they agreed to come on my channel, um, they would tell me what they can't talk about. I can't, we can talk about anything but that, but, the, but any work that's struck like Warner Brothers work or Disney work or anything like that, we, we could talk about, but we could talk about, we could just shoot the shit though. And we can talk about um, things like how much, um, um, I mean, but, but when I start talking about movies that are gonna be in the box office and how much they're gonna make and stuff, then that actor probably would be like, hey, I gotta abstain from this conversation. Let me, let me get out now, kind of a thing. Maybe that would happen. But me, I don't have to stop. But but them, um, Drew Barrymore. Look, uh, if I could say, like, if her show was always a talk show, but she always had actors and stuff on it, I can understand the confusion what Tabitha was talking about. But if the show can continue on and not necessarily, be, if it, if it can, for the time being, evolve and 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 steer away from that, so they can still be in solidarity with the strike, and other people who aren't a, uh, a part of that and but are still affected by it can still make a living i think that's a good thing the problem that tabitha had with it is the fact that a lot of that money is still going to funnel up to the people who are you know that they're protesting against and that's what she's uh, against which I, I agree but i mean they're they're still making uh it's it's i don't feel like i don't i can't do the scorched earth approach uh peter so does that that was the that was a question that i answered i don't know why it highlighted it as if i didn't uh, highlight it dragon also the line between entertainment and news is a bit sketchy like today's show and night and nbc nightly news are still doing shows and writers are are, are writing script uh nightly new but these are but those are those are news journalists those are journalists and and uh or critics and things like that not necessarily writers guild writers we're talking that's the difference though like new nightly news nbc news and things like that we're talking about those writers are writing uh who write the teleprompters and stuff like that those are mostly journalists they're not like sag right and if some of them are sag members or or wga members they probably they probably would not be allowed to work but the people who are writing the 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 um the teleprompter stuff uh and and things like that most of those guys are, are probably not members of the wga uh, and most of those people who are working to uh report the news and story like th these are these are journalists and and things like that these are people uh, like like um the people who write the articles for uh deadline and variety even though they're talking about movies and actors and stuff like that they're writers they are journalists and writing uh, stories, uh, covering stories of, of current events and things that are happening. They're not necessarily actors and writers writing movie scripts and stuff. So that's that's two different things. Like like, like um, night show people, Drew Barrymore herself, she said she had three 
WGA writers who wrote for her show. They're like, like you were saying, they were probably writing sketches, her opening monologue, making her fun, making her seem funny, and and making the show f- uh, more entertaining to for, well, on certain topics and stuff. But since they can't work for her right now, since they're on strike, she's probably just writing. Uh, she, the, the people who aren't members are probably just writing certain like bullet points. Okay, we're gonna we're just gonna talk, but just shoot the shit with this this person. And just talk about eggs and bacon and what you had in the morning or what you had for lunch just talk about what's going on in hawaii just talk about that it's a talk show just talk that's uh it's a podcast just talk it's a this and that just 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 go into a podcast style and that's what what tabitha was was saying was that then she should gear it towards uh make it officially a podcast well technically it is but there's there's cameras what tabitha had a problem with is the fact that that fun that money is just going to keep funneling up to the powers that be and she just did not uh, she did not like that. Uh, they're going, Peter Lang, uh, they're going to use AI eventually. There's no stopping that. Protesting that will uh, really uh, will really only force it to happen sooner unless they get what they want. Um, they, I think there was a ruling that just came out that you can't get an award for AI stuff. Like, like if you, like, in, let's say it's 10 years in the future and you wrote, and there was a movie that was written by an AI and it was a beautiful movie. It was that was uh, impactful and Oscar worthy. I don't think it would quali- it, I, I think based on the new agree- I forgot who I got to go back to see who made what this agreement said. I got to read it again because I only heard about it. AI uh, stuff cannot get awards because there was no there was no real writer. It was an algorithm wrote it. It just threw some words together. It, it might have wrote a beautiful story, but who you you. You would think in that situation the producer would get the uh, the award for best writer. Like, no, you didn't write it, and you uh, you basically had a, a a fancy search engine write it for you, pretty much. And and so so that's uh, that's what they're trying to put a, a stop to. That's what they're that's what they're mostly one of the things. I'm just I'm just uh, probably paraphrasing, but that's that's one of the things that they're trying to fight against. Uh, it's it's going to happen. Unless they shut it, unless they shut it down, if you can't win, if you can't make money off of it, you can't win awards off of it, then it won't happen as as much as they as, as you think it's going to happen. And and a lot of a lot of these writers, they, they're not going to get the credit or the money that they that they like because why would if why would a producer say if 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 I hired you as a writer to write me a movie script and I found out that you didn't write it, why am I paying you? <laughs> yeah, so so that would be the whole. That's one of the arguments and, uh, and stuff like that. If, if I can get away with not even paying you and if I can get it from then, then um, why do I need you? And then so so if they're going to fight on the other side, OK, well, if you but if you can't make get awards and stuff. like So I, I got to read the details of it again. But but they're trying to they're fighting on both sides and trying to negotiate and both sides are going to try to lose, uh, uh, make the other side lose as much as possible to so everybody can get what they want. Uh, does Tabitha realize that uh, there isn't a platform where it doesn't trickle up to the big wigs? I don't think so. I, that's one. Of, so that was the point that I was trying to make to her. That a lot of this stuff is going to trickle up, whether you like it or not. Uh, Net, uh, uh, App, uh, Amazon and Apple, they don't need um, talk about. They could use AI if they wanted to, but they don't. They they're making network shows and stuff like that and and on Hollywood uh, types of, of stuff too. But but just because if Apple TV Plus or if Amazon uh, Videos shut down today, Amazon is still the richest one of the and, and Apple is still the richest companies in the world. They don't care. It's a it's a it's a fraction. They still making money. And and the streaming thing is is one of the re, the main uh, things that they that they're upset about. The fact that writers don't get money. Uh, from or actors don't get money from uh, uh, things that are syndicated to streaming network. They found a loophole around it. Since it's not network TV, I don't have to pay you because we don't get we don't get those uh, commercials and stuff. It's not syndicated the same way. It's streaming, not syndication. I don't have to pay you shit. So that's that's so a lot of these companies are, f- are finding are finding ways anyway to make that to get that money. And you're right. I was. I wish I'd. Have, I wish I'd have saw that in the middle of the conversation. But I was having so many problems with the. Uh, since I've been out of touch with this with the program for so long, I was. I was missing a lot of what you guys were saying. But that would have been a good point for to me to to bring up to her. 
uh these celebrity mo- dragon movie guy these celebrities may not be able to promote their movies right now but they can totally go on the to raise money for charities uh to look good uh we've raised 300k for x cause uh look how selfless i am i mean yeah uh yeah they they exa- but we're only thinking about the celebrities like the rock and stuff like that like what he him and oprah did their thing uh in hawaii and still got and still got bashed for it like because they were asking for uh, donations from the majority of hollywood is not what we see everybody's always it's just like how people are always saying all of hollywood is a cesspool they're all deviants and they're all perfect no the majority of all the actors in hollywood are that struggling young man or young lady that's working two jobs as a waitress and blah 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 because they're they are struggling to get roles and get gigs and break into the industry and they're still trying to find their big break the people that are razzle dazzle in our face making all that tom cruise money all the time is always in our face all the time because and that's what we feel like and when people assume that's all of hollywood that's like one percent of all the actors the other 99 percent are are paycheck to paycheck work busting their ass to, and struggling and to make ends meet and working multiple jobs and 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 uh and and have the same type of issues and stuff that i have and and, and whatnot trying to just trying to make a living and people need to remember that that this strike might not affect the rock and tom cruise and tom hanks and and uh and and, 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 and oprah and all these people uh at all they can they can ride it out and like ah, good good i'm in my mick mansion i'm chilling but the but the other 99 percent I got. I can't afford. I got to move out of, uh, out of L.A. I, I I was I was dependent on that that gig that I was about to that I just that the director called me and said I got the role, but we can't. Well, we can't uh, start, and we don't know when we're going to start. And a lot of they, they're they're doing gig jobs. They're they're doing Uber and stuff. They're they're doing whatever it takes to try to just make it through and hoping that the the powers that be will will uh, give in and. and and give them what they're asking for but in the meantime but a lot but a lot of those producers are hoping and they said it themselves once they start losing their mortgages once they start losing those homes once they start losing their once their kids can't get those new clothes when school starts and stuff those writers and actors they'll be back they're gonna be begging us to to rip them off some more and they and that's, that's a fucked up thing but they might they they could they could win that that's fucked up. John Stewart and the Daily uh, Show were as left wing as any show back during the two, uh, 28 strike, and they went back to work while the strike uh, was going on. And because of it, it was mostly uh, a politics, they talked uh, they talked po- uh, politics and stuff. Yeah, they have writers and actors and stuff. I, you, yeah, I know those. I know those dudes. And that was what, that's what Joy brought up. They this whole crossing the line and scabbing. I didn't hear it about uh, them, but at the same time, t- uh, Twitter wasn't as popular and TikTok wasn't a thing back then. So maybe, maybe if it was, maybe we would have heard it as much, but with social, where social media was then where it is today, maybe, maybe we would have heard more uh, of it, but you're right. We didn't hear too much uh, about it. Tabs turned that mic up. Uh, can't hear her. Your mics are fine. It's just Tabitha who's fucking up. <laughs> uh, Peter Lang. We went to court and was found. He went to court and was found guilty. The mind, to to my mind, just saying he was a, a good around me doesn't uh, negate the crime. Exactly. Let's go going back to Danny Masterson, and I, I tap at this point where she said, like, if a close person of mine, like, hey, look, at least I know from now that if shit. I I got this shit recorded. Now I got this evidence. So if I ever get uh, get accused of, if I go down for a heinous crime, she better be right there with that with that letter to have my back. Cause she she said that that she takes she approaches everybody as if if it's their own kids. If I guess if we're close enough, but uh, but watch if it was me. Watch it depends on what I did. I'm just she gonna be like, nah, Chris, nah, nah. You convince me now, nah, nah. I think uh. I don't think it's a good idea to write that letter. Like, no, no, you, you, you understood it when Ashton and uh, Mila did it, and you said you were you if they're approaching it like they they might be blood like they they have a, a relationship that's stronger than blood family blood ties. I'm like, okay, 
but they still I still feel like they still should have understood the optics of it. It wasn't a good look, especially if if you have a chair, if you have a, a or a, an organization that's all about stopping trafficking of children and minors, stopping them from being trafficked. And that's your whole. Th- and then one of your I don't give a damn if it is a blood relative, if your cousin of yours was arrested for and was and was proven uh, guilty. It was evidence and it was like camera evidence, it was video and it was, it was in this computer and all that, doing that, doing all the, doing that. You're going to do, you're going to write a, a a character. Well, but, but when we were kids, he was a, he was a good guy and he never did that to any of, you know, my children or his own. And this and that, like, like, that's not how you start the, the that, that letter off. Now, what you guys said made, it was 100%. The way they, they did not acknowledge the fact that he was found guilty. I mean, I mean, is it is it possible that he could be being framed and all this stuff? Let's say, okay, yeah. Let's say let's say they believe that that he was one hundred percent innocent, that he was being framed. It still is not a good look, especially if you have charity organizations about that same exact subject. So start that letter, like you guys said. They should have started that letter better than that and acknowledge what you know the suffering what that he probably put because there's a because ch- whether you believe it he, he was guilty or not what if he's guilty what if he did do it like I, I can understand you not believing i don't believe he did it okay but what if he did you want to take that i don't like putting myself in a position where where uh, where um i stick my neck out and it turns out you were lying to me the whole time you got me because because what if a Masterson eventually uh, confesses in prison or something or later on to like cleanse his soul or whatever and go, I, I, I did that shit. I did that shit. What's Ashton and them going to say? That, that, so I got you guys to write a character letter of uh, talking about how great of a guy I was when I was lying to you. Because remember, that's, that's the person that they could be writing that letter for. A person who was just not showing you who the other side of them and lying to you about that stuff. And then later he, he what if he confesses and goes, yeah, Ashton, yeah, me, my, yeah, I, I did that. I did that shit. Damn dude. What, you, you got me. I wrote that letter for you. Yeah, I appreciate it. It almost worked. Would have got away with it too. If it wasn't for that meddling judge. Uh, Dexter deserves audience support during the original show because the writers was good. <laughs> Dexter, New Blood deserves to not have support because the writing was so bad. Uh, IPSO fact, uh, uh, ipso facto, uh, Ashton. <laughs> I still haven't watched that, the new Dexter, man. I, I need to, is it that bad? I gotta watch that. I need to catch up to it. Uh, and Mila shouldn't write for Dexter, uh, New Blood season two. Uh, Oh, I see what you guys are talking about. Let me go down here. Peter, LOL. Uh, at Peter Lang. So does Seth Meyers, every t- uh, every time he forces his audience to survive an awful late night show, uh, that's uh, sadistic torture every night. And that's just the monologue. Uh, who? Uh, Seth Meyers? Oh, I think Seth's funny. Uh, his humor is... It's 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 particular. It's if you didn't like it, if you didn't like him on Saturday Night Live when he was doing uh, the weekly update, then yeah, you aren't you're not gonna like him hosting um, uh, his his late night. Uh, uh, Pierre Kelly, this uh, this was the movie. I guess we're talking about about showgirls. This was the movie in which Elizabeth Berkeley left Bayside for uh, Las, uh, Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, I I really did think that that movie was gonna have a a, a, a an impact for her career. I thought she was going to be more sought out uh, after. Uh, I I have a funny feeling that if that movie was made today, that it would have it would have done at least done better. Uh, it would have been re- more uh, received. Uh, Miley Cyrus, no. Uh, uh, as a Las Vegas uh, resident, watching Showgirls now is a huge time warp. As the city looks nothing like that film. I heard that. Yeah, it's totally different. Like oh, were you talking about there when the when the when you know who used to own all those casinos, right? I know I heard that I've heard that it's that 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 
Vegas from the 60s, 70s, and uh, from the 80s and 90s is different today because of who was really running the show back then. So I, I know what you mean. I, I heard that, but I didn't know you. Oh, so you live in Vegas. So you right there. So you're there, there. Okay. Uh, Tap with this mic got turned up uh, just in time. And the NC-17 rating was well used in this film. Just wish the film was better. Yeah, agreed. All right, I said I got on all those. Dragon movie got continues. Uh, keep in mind, Showgirls came out mostly pre-internet, so there's no way this movie would be so controversial today considering the P-Hub is out there for free and Megan Thee Stallion uh, hitting songs. Yep, yeah. Oh yeah, get a bucket and a mop. That would have been the that would have been the theme song for that movie for Showgirls. There's some homes in this. <laughs> uh, forget '80s hairband videos, dude. Remember the videos where Naomi Campbell almost went down on Michael Jackson? Mm. Uh, uh, was that Nev? Yeah, was that her? Nev, it was that was Nev Campbell. Uh, Naomi? Oh, was Naomi Campbell? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, uh, it wasn't he wearing that wife beater? Looked like he was wearing a dress. <laughs> like, they're like Snoop Dogg and Baby Boy wearing that wife beater with them with them no muscles on. It's cracking me up more than the licking the pole. The red hair actor staring at Elizabeth Berkeley in the photo. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Oh, one of the, of the oh the steel. Oh, okay, oh, that, oh, that that I had uh, next. Okay, okay, I see what you're talking about. Uh, the tab uh, the tab of the watch, Dirty Dancing. I think she said she did. I can text her real quick before uh, I end the stream. Have you ever seen Dirty Dancing? I know Joy has. You know, I remember seeing something um, making fun of that 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 movie. Talking about nobody puts baby in the corner. In the in the I think it was Family Guy. Uh, and the father was like, you you mean my my 16 year old daughter? Damn right. Somebody I put her in the corner. Get your ain't you like 45. Get your ass away from me and my daughter. She's 16. Get your ass away from me. <laughs> uh, the type of the watch. Dance. I'll see if she if she answers before uh, I, I get to the end, because we're almost at the end uh, here. Blue Beetle uh, Dragon movie guy. Blue Beetle couldn't even break 25 million opening weekend. Thanks, Zack Snyder. Release the Snyder Cut. Uh, as they say, it's our bedtime. Uh, at Dragon, what did you say? Uh, it's only 8 p.m. here in Vegas. He said, me, uh, he said, me too. I guess that's what you were talking about there. Uh, Ghostbusters 2016 failed for tons of reasons, but wokeness isn't one of them. Bad casting, bad directing, bad writing. Look, that movie had me until... Um, Thor uh, uh, was Liam was uh, was I don't know what his pro his character didn't need to be that silly that goofy and that lame he could have been he didn't need to be uh, that silly he could have he could have played it like uh, Jen, uh, was it was the character name Janine the the original Ghostbusters uh, he could have been a serious character like she was like and and, and, and like it would have been funnier to me that if he would have been like straight up serious. But it went too goofy towards the end and with with his character. The way they, they ended it was it was so bad. I only saw it once in the theaters and I, and I was like, yeah, this movie ain't going to be all that great. And uh, I love the last one. Uh, I think I, oh, I already caught that one. Uh, member Brianna Jasmine uh, was in the chat. It's 1115 uh, for me. Uh, definitely past my bedtime sorry about that sorry keeping you guys up so uh so late uh on it but i definitely want to make sure i got to all these chats because it's been a while i haven't done this in a, uh i was so sick for the past two weeks so i missed uh, doing this drag movie guy continues on i think i have the vid in january 2020 driving uber or picking up a conven uh convention air from china uh, who was coughing up a storm uh, cough. Oh, I think I got the vid. Oh, okay. I was like, I thought you meant video. And yeah, January 2020, driving Uber, picking up a conven uh, convention air from China who was coughing up a storm, caught something and was on uh, on my tuckers for a week. No bueno. Uh, continues on. Love the T'Challa uh, lamp uh, in the background, by the way. Thanks, man. It's, yeah, it's just, it was an old... Um, Halloween mask for my kids. It was an old Halloween mask for my kids. And when they grew out of it, I was like, but 
it's still a, a Black Panther. So I just I put it on this this mic stand and I put a, a bulb behind it, and there we go. It's been it's been one of my props from for a long time. Uh, let's see, one of the last ones before we call we call it a a, a day a night. The whole thing about AI uh, in writing is a bit of a paper tiger. There's no way they can prove that AI wasn't used in the writing uh, process along the way. I mean, uh, I mean, um, there's no way they can prove AI wasn't used in the writing process. To a certain, to a certain extent, well, AI right as of right now they can because a lot of the AI uh, hasn't perfected the the element that it's like when you're watching a movie that's using uh, special effects or trying to show a, a a CGI human being. Your eye, your naked eye, is so used to seeing people in real life and natural light to when we see it on screen and as, as a CGI character, something in our brain tells us there's something off about this. They haven't perfected it where to a point where you can, uh, and as much as some people are trying to say that the Flash movie did a great job with Ezra and Ezra and Ezra, I, though the CGI was th there, I could tell each and every time which, uh, which Ezra was the, the, the green screen Ezra. I don't know what some people are saying that that was the per was perfect Ezra and Ezra. Uh, no, I could tell 100% almost in every shot. It was like only one or two shots where I couldn't tell. But every scene where they were in screen together, I could tell uh, how uh, one of them was off. I, I, it was it was I could tell when I saw it on the screen, big screen. And I could I could really tell when I when it, uh, came on digital. But something in your mind tells you that something's off here. And when you're reading a AI generated script, the, the AI will use some words and some, some phrase, some things where it, it throws you all like, that's not how a person would say something like this. So unless this is just a bad writer, this is probably AI generated. So I, I said, but I see what you're saying. Who's to say that AI wasn't used in the writing process of uh, some point, a slippery slope of anything. Hey, I get it because like I, I, I used AI to write my my resume and things like that. I used to use AI to um, to quickly put something together. Like if I need to, a rundown of something, I'll, I might go to Chat uh, GPT and and get it put together uh, uh, for it. Just just so I could expedite it if I'm running out of time. I should have did that to, uh, today so I can get the show up uh, on time, but I didn't. But no, I, I see what you, I, I see what you're saying. But there's 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 ways they can tell. They they've been able to tell. They they can tell. It's usually writers can tell because um, they're because uh, and then on top of that I'm pretty sure a bunch of writers don't want to be accused of it he's like oh this is some bullshit I can this is this is, this is AI wasn't it and then they, they, they get insulted because they're like what, what was wrong with it or something like that so I don't think people won't even want to be accused of it but but I know I see what you're saying though all right guys that, that was it I ran down the whole thing I, I usually on on a Thursday night I, I don't run down all the chats but i wanted to do it this time because you know i haven't done it in a while and uh so i appreciate you guys sticking up with me uh for a long episode uh, of the rundown uh good night keep calm and watch the pool scene from showgirls oh yeah i will about to go so uh yeah on that note peter lane you're right uh appreciate you support the channel peter uh, as always man thanks you for, uh, thanks for uh keeping me company to uh, to the very end so uh for peter lane uh to dragon movie guy uh let's see who else uh brianna jasmine uh, uh channel members uh like uh pierre kelly appreciate you guys for keeping us company johnny quest at the very beginning uh johnny quest uh this sort of behavior by police officers is why i don't agree with uh back the blue statement these thugs in, in uniform aren't upholding the law they're abusing uh their authority my, my opinion about that is they're always talking about the few bad apples, but whenever a bad apple presents themselves, people still try to protect. Them. Like the, you, you want to hide behind the statement of a bad apple. This is a bad apple. Throw them away. Stop. Why? Why defend them? You got plenty of good apples to pick from. Why? Why? But but they. But each and it's like 
each and every situation, they uh, the people are always taking it personal as if it's an attack on all. Every black person that I see on TV that commits a crime does not speak for me. And I can't speak for every black person. I can't. Even Tupac said that. How? I'd be hard. I can't. I can't be responsible for everything every black man does. I can't. It's hard. So if if my if my uncle is a is, is a was a HPD officer de- detective, uh, now currently is a sh- is the sheriff of uh, Missouri City. He, he was elected sheriff. He has a long career in, in HPD. He worked for the mayor of Houston for a long time, and now he's a, he's an elected sheriff. Uh, I'm sure he believes in back the blue too. He's black. He's blacker than me. I'm sure he believes in uh, back the blue. But would he? But would he? And I've seen and I've seen him investigate uh, cops. Would he uh, protect a corrupt cop? I would hope not. I don't. If he, I hope he's never done it. I don't believe he ever has. And he and from what I know of him, he never would. But um, this this whole that that whole mentality of if you you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you admit that there's bad apples out there, when a bad apple presents himself, that's just like this Ashton Kutcher thing. Don't put yourself in a situation where you might be protecting a bad apple. If everybody today is always taking shit so personally because if you if well if you're saying that that white guy uh said well, that what that guy what that white guy said wasn't that bad, so if you're saying that he's racist, you might be calling me racist. No, not about you. It's about that dude. Why, why are you fighting for him? He said it. You didn't. But when you start defending them that hard, then I got then I start I'm, like, I'm looking at you now. So that's how I feel about uh, that. Like if they're a bad apple, throw that motherfucker away. I mean, just because if a dude, if a black dude committed a crime that he looked exactly like me, grew up like me, but he but he committed a heinous crime, I ain't gonna just they, they, they do you, dude. They found that shit on your on on CCTV. You you, you guilty to the mug. Don't don't be trying to give me that Black Lives Matter. You, hey, like you going to jail? Your life matters, but you still going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> like that was, we're talking about with that with Dexter. You only accuse the bad people. I'd still turn his ass in. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not. It's a, it's a bad apple. Stop. Stop protecting bad apples. Throw that shit away. It's nasty. All right, guys. That's the show. Peace out and sayonara, motherfuckers. Until next time. Have a happy man. See you guys later. Peace. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, like, and comment your thoughts on this topic or any topics that you think that we should talk about in upcoming videos. Also, you can follow us at T3 Medias on Instagram, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and we also have a T3 Media Studios podcast where we post our movie reviews and episodes of The Rundown. Till next time, guys.